Don't forget to show love. Give us money. No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's going to happen. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what happened in Manchester, we're going to talk about all episode, and then we're going to get into Saudi Arabia. We're going to get into UFC fight night, Sandhagen versus Nurmagomedov. Lots of good fights to break down this upcoming weekend. Lots of juicy lines, no matter which way you're going. You got value. We are going to talk about it. We're going to break it all down, give you our picks, main card prelims. But first, you can see I came back from the fucking trenches, minus 130 last weekend, Plus 546 weekend. The king is back. The king's back. I had to bust out the 22 inch solid pythons for this one. And uh, you see Dan, he's got a cat on his lap. Alex, he's wearing pink. These boys are fucking malnourished. These boys are absolutely cucked. We will see, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how they're doing. I haven't talked to them very much. They were pretty silent in the group chat uh, ever since mm-hmm. Saturday night. I had one of the best times I've had on a Saturday night in a very long time. And it didn't even necessarily have to do with it being a successful gambling night. It didn't even necessarily have to do with the card being fun to watch. It just had to do with the Discord. Everybody in the Discord was popping. Everybody in the Discord was was having a good time. Devin, shout out to Devon. Shout out to VCR Repairman. Shout out to Cowboy. Shout out to Activia. Let's see, who else we got here? I'm just scrolling up. I'm just seeing who was most active in the damn discord We had a lot of fun in the Discord, everybody. Everybody was chatting shit. Everybody was chatting shite. Everybody was having a good time. Get in the Discord. Taking the piss. For next weekend. But right now, we're here to talk to Dan and Alex. Dan, Alex, how are you guys doing, my brothers? How are you doing, Alex? Decent. I had a, you know, I'm the type of guy, I leave my balls on the table and smash them numerous times in a row for you. You know, watch me bruise and bleed for you, okay? I take my balls every weekend. I put them on the table. I smash them with a hammer every single time. No matter how good of odds I have to do anything, it doesn't matter. It all comes down to the main event every weekend, and my balls get smashed every single weekend, and I do it for you. Watch me bruise and bleed for you. If you can name that song in the chat below, $5 to your Venmo. What song is that? Don't fucking Google the lyrics. If you know the song, you have to give me actually, you have to, you have to give me something more to let me know you actually know that band, that song. Scout's Honor. Scout's yeah, Honor. Yeah, yeah. Dan? I am you? absolutely gutted. Let me just cut you off right there. I'm gutted like a fish off the bay uh, of the English shores. Um you know, normally I'm the conservative guy, right? I'm, I'm the guy that keeps these guys in line. I say, hey, don't bet your mortgage on this pick, that pick. This past weekend, I was the damn fool. I was the one with the, uh, you know, smashed my nuts on the table or whatever Alex's metaphor is. I was the one really going all in. As you can see, it didn't pay out. Um, you know, I, I feel a little, a little proud that I actually went out there. I tried the damn thing. You know, you can't hit a home run unless you swing. Am I going to swing as hard this coming weekend with my you know negative one fifty two balance here? No, certainly not. I'm going to be you know I'm going to be hitting line drives, going for a double, and then maybe the week after that I'll I'll go for a home run again. But you know what? I I tried it didn't work out. That's okay. There's fifty two weeks in the year. We got plenty more UFC events to uh, to break down here and win some more money on. So it's all good. It's all good in the hood. For me, I got to attribute my success to a voodoo ritual that I did earlier in the week. So, um, and this is 100% true. I was taking a walk at work. Um, I was walking around outside my office down into this residential neighborhood. And there's this little stream and this creek. And where I live, there's some uh, there's some lizards, some newts, geckos, skinks, if you will. I'm not really sure what they are. But they're really exotic looking. They're like blue, right? So I'm walking, walking, and this tiny little thing, this little baby, baby skink is uh, crossing my path. And I accidentally, just the way it worked, I stepped on it. And I was like, oh, no, oh, I think I crushed that poor little baby skink. Uh, But when I lifted my foot, there was no skink there. But what was there was a little tail still wriggling, still wriggling, squirming all around off the skink. So I go, oh, man. 
Um, and you know, I keep I go keep going on my walk, and then on the way back, I check if the tail's still there. It is, and it's still wriggling. A tail still wriggling. What does that remind you of, everybody? Me, the stepped on skink. Me, the man who hit zero from three thousand nine hundred. And if you guys are wondering what these numbers mean, if it's your first time joining the show, it's our fifth season. In the fifth season, we all started with a thousand dollar bankroll, and to see over the course of a year, May 9th to May 9th, who could win the most money off of a thousand dollar bankroll. Now there were specific rules. If you lose, if you lose your thousand dollar bankroll, you uh, have to pay the others an immediate tax of a hundred dollars. I was actually the highest to go, up to three thousand nine hundred and some odd dollars, and then back down all the way to zero. Really trying to turn that number into a really big nut. And uh, I hit zero. I paid Alex 100. I paid Dan 100. Alex hit zero shortly after and was going into this weekend at net zero at zero. Um, and Dan had like 350 bucks still in his uh, coffers going into this weekend. And as you can see, so anyway, back to the skink. You know what's hilarious? Yeah, yeah, you know what's hilarious? If I knew Dan <clears throat> was in the negative, I would have cashed out my bet going into the final. final. But I was like, I can take first place if I – if I just leave this in and Leon Edwards is definitely going to win. Sheet then. I was keeping it all very accounted. I, I was the accountant. I was Ben Affleck all night. I was, if you followed my open bet sheet, you saw um, exactly what was going on. I was updating it autistic. as I go. I was, I, my bum was in the seat the whole night. So that's the whole point of that movie. He's autistic, right? The account. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either, but you're right. So anyway, listen, the skink back to the skink. So I picked up the tail of the skink and I remembered all the nursery rhymes from my youth, you know, eye of hair tail of newt you know what i mean and uh i i saw this rock i mean not only was the rock large and stationary and and, and uh, centered uh in a circle uh but i i just saw this rock as this, this sort of an altar right like an altar in runescape alex right so i see this mm -hmm. altar i have this tail of skink and i i, I said if, if there ever were an opportunity to, to do some voodoo here it is um i put the tail of the skink on the altar and I raised my hands up to the gods and I said, the one true God, sorry, the one true, I, I raised my hands up to the one true God. I said, God, I said, if ever you're listening, please accept this offering and reward me in the form of gambling wins. I literally said that I have a witness. And as soon as I said that all these bugs swarmed on the tail and consumed it almost instantly, like little, little beetles and little ants. Pestilence. Yes. So I, uh, think that that played a role in my success so let's share we're going to take you guys through the whole fight card but i just want to sh uh as we go through we'll tell you kind of like what our bets were during these times um but i want to share my open bet sheet just to show everybody just how uh just how detailed and accurate i was so you know if you look here you'll see uh that i i, I put out i was putting out you know how much money i still had out on bets and i was putting out you know uh i was like letting everybody know, wait, sorry, uh, I was letting everybody know, you know, this is the grand total in the evening, but I was doing this sort of math for everybody all night, right? I was saying how much I had won, how much I had lost, what my year-to-date total was. So I started the night with minus 130. I won $676.15, subtracted from my negative balance, and that leaves me at 546.15. You can see, though, I won $1,466.65. I lost $790. Now, some of that $790 uh, was on, like, hedge bets, right? Like, so I'll give you a couple examples here in a second, but if you go down to the losing column, you'll see I lost a fucking shitload of bets. <laughs> I placed 45 total bets and I won eight. These are the eight. You see them right here. Um, first one of the evening, Mick Parkin, under 61 and a half strikes landed. On DraftKings, that was glaring to me. I saw this and I was like, you know, this is a heavyweight fight and Mick Parkin's kind of low volume. He's probably going to not even throw that many strikes in the whole fight. But if he knocks this guy out, we're certainly going to hit the under there. Boom. hundred bucks right there. Um, this one, Oban Elliott, that was a hedge. So I counted up how many, how much money I had out uh, on parlays with Preston Parsons. And it was quite a few. You can see Parsons, 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 all these Parsons bets. Um, I added it all up. I actually did the math wrong, but I bet 40 on him to win 98. And then Hadley, that was a last uh, minute second decision. That was me going, okay, four out of five of our triple P certified picks have won tonight. Are we going to go perfect triple P certified? Also, it had to do with the uh, post fight face off uh, where uh, Cal and Lauren was getting in Hadley's face and he just was going, we'll see. We'll see about that. And I'm like, all right, it's Hadley. So then as soon as the fight's about to start, I see my boy Activity is on Hadley. I go, Activity, it can't be wrong all the time. So I throw 100 bucks on Hadley, win 195. 
Bruno Brazil. I, I can't believe uh, Kowlin Lovren just is like a Minecraft character. He's just like literally just block on top of block. I know. That's I know. all he, he is. is. He's stiff as a ball. He's a square. He's he's literally a perfect cube, cubature figure, rectangular cube, uh, cubes on top of cubes. That's how I would describe Cal and Lauren. Yeah. And it just seemed too obvious at a certain point that, um, you know, I thought his ground and pound mixed with Hadley's uh, willingness to accept bottom position at times that, that I've seen would pay dividends for Lauren and also Hadley missing weight. Maybe, you know, he wasn't in the best shape. But then the closer it got, the more I was like, no, no, no. It, it is – Motherfucking Jake Hadley. I mean, like, whoa, Widowy looks like a Wego. Yes, he does. So, real quick, you know, uh, then, you know, I picked Bruno Brazil on the podcast. There was a win there. I throw a bet on to Nathaniel Wood and Daniel Panetta over one and a half rounds. Um, and then we'll get into the main, main, main fights in a second here. But that was largely kind of what made me, you know, in the black. But even at that point, I was still only like 20 bucks past zero, right? So I, I had b- battled back for my minus 130, but. I still had work to do. I still had a lot of work to do. Guys, it was a knife fight. It was an absolute bare-knuckle brawl for me all night. You, you saw how it went. I mean, I pretty much was able to win almost on every single fight in some way. But a lot of it was due to the fact that the first few fights of the night, I think it was uh, the first, you know, um, one uh, Bannon, Parkin, Patterson, Bukalkis, four in a row right there. So I had a lot of perfect parlays. Uh, still still active, which allowed me the ability to go, okay, I'm going to win a lot if this trend continues. So let's start to throw little little pennies over on the other side. And I did a stairway to heaven method where I was able to win against myself even when I lost. Um, you got to get right. You got to get the first few right in order to do that, right? Um, but we can go back, you know, just qu- real quick, couple of little recap things. Um, you know, Sean Abaddon versus Alice Sardine. I threw 25 on Alice Sardine at one point uh, right before the fight. Um seeing how kind of game she was and just thinking like, you know, for the most part, it's like you just fade these big favorites, right? Um, and I don't know. You guys want to talk through the prelims a little bit? Anything anything happened to you guys? Anything you saw that you want to point out? I don't want to, like, take all the airtime here. Uh, I missed the uh, the first fight. Uh, let's see. I missed the first couple, actually. But I hopped in around the Jake Hadley fight. I did have Hadley. Um I was happy with that outcome. I did pick Hadley on the show at uh, plus one seventy. He was piecing him up. You know, a lot he of people that boy Obon Elliott, Obon Elliott, man, he did well. And that Obon Elliott too. I missed that fight though. I do want I to talk that. about because Preston Pressure Parsons, right? We all we all took the wrong lesson going into that fight, right? The lesson that we all wanted to take was American wrestler versus Welsh wrestler. Okay, but what we should have taken into account is Obon Elliott being the better striker. And a competent enough wrestler is going to prevent himself from getting completely flattened and steamrolled like a Matt Semmelsberger was was done against Parsons. Uh, we should have been like, no, that Obano is good enough to cancel this out. And all things equal, he's going to look better when the fight's standing. And with the recent kind of damage-based scoring that everyone's getting hit to, even though it was done seven years ago. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of the lesson that I learned from that one is don't try to fade a wrestler uh, with a better wrestler, unless it's really fucking a lot better, you know. So what I mean? was the fight mainly on the feet? He was just piecing him up. I missed mm-hmm. that fight. Uh, yeah, basically it was him not piecing him up, but just you know sixty forty, Oban on the feet, and then the the missed takedown attempts. And here's the other thing: President Parsons would go for a takedown and get himself spun with his back against the fence a lot. So he ended up with his back against the fence. So um, lessons learned there. PPP press or Preston Parsons is kind of hard to. You know, kind of hard to uh, go against the signs, you know? I mean, but, the signs. The signs, Jerry. That's, that's No love right loss with pressure Preston. I think he comes back stronger and we get better. We get a better line on him in the future. Um, Alex, any uh, anything from the prelims you wanted, that stood out to you? I mean, Mick me, Parson. Really... Mick, Mick Parkin. Parkin absolutely <laughs> sensational. Yeah. Absolutely sensational performance. Looked amazing. Um, that's what we want to see, you know? he And Tom Aspinall even said in the post fight, he said – Mix looked a little boring. He, he's looked a little boring lately, so it was good to see him. I was actually more excited for him to get the bonus than me. You know, that that was Tom Aspinall that said that. So Mick Parkin, you know, I take back everything I've ever said about him. Uh, I I love him now. That was a great performance, knocking out Lucas Bretsky, making it look easy, uh, sensational. And then what was the fight after that? I think that can was. I, can I touch Dana on that? was talking quick? shit about this card. This card was actually like really good. It was well, a good card. We'll get into the post fight press conference because that was even more drama filled than the card itself in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Dana White 
was spitting mad uh, for some odd reason. And honestly, not even spitting mad, more like uh, cold and passive aggressive. Very cold, very cold. You know? But I, I love that. I loved it. I, I thought it was fine. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about that. Um, real quick, real quick. Let me talk about the parking oh, fight. Um, so did you not watch the fight, though? I didn't watch the fight, but I, I mean, it was in the first round and I saw the highlights. So I basically saw the fight. Okay. Um, you know, the, the narrative, which was definitely true, that Mick Parkin is like a guy that like moves a lot and he hits the jab and the, the fight typically goes to the over. I had a lot of overs, but I also kind of caught myself as I'm making my bets. I thought, you know, it's a heavyweight fight with a guy who's almost a minus 400 favorite. So, yeah, he typically has gone to decision. But if he's seen as that dominant over the guy at heavyweight, there's a good chance he's going to knock him out. So I did have a good amount of unders as well. And uh, my pars, my parlays that went relatively far, um, obviously, you know, those were benefited from having a good line at, you know, under two and a half in a heavyweight fight. You're going to get plus value. I mean, that's that's a good lesson, I think, that we can take forward. I like that. And uh, to me, I got to start looking at these DraftKings props because I think there's some room in there for some big plays here and there. I mean, if they were even minus 115 on under 61 strikes, that was so glaring to me. Um, that I had to throw 115 bucks on that uh, at the very beginning of the evening, which was good to get a little dry powder for the rest of the card. Um, you know, the areas that I lost the most were pressure Parsons for sure. Uh, you, you know, uh, other than that, I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of my parlay, oh, Christian Leroy Duncan and Giga Chikazi, I'd say were the, the bigger oh. ones. Um, I tried to be a little cute with certain ones. Like I saw Dan was going over one and a half in the Patterson Crosby fight and Crosby sure would have had he convinced that he was going to put up more of an effort than that. Um, but, you know, with his kind of uh, insistence to clench and, and get close to Patterson, it's like, yeah, you want to get close to the guy, but not that close and not for that long, you know. Um, you have no ground game whatsoever. So another guy who has no ground game, Nathaniel Wood, he got swept by uh, Pineda with, like, a really rudimentary, uh, you know, sweep like it was that Kimura sweep from from guard like in the fourth what? round or in the third round though I think he was like was coasting yeah, yeah. I, I I thought the only real moments Pineda had were in the third round when Wood was kind of coasting and I mean Pineda got the shit beat out of him he got dropped rocked hurt all sorts of different mm-hmm. ways and the fact he got dropped like four times coast, like guys he he really got his fucking ass kicked look at his face at the end of the fight Nathaniel Wood still looked like uh you know Pinocchio he looked like a little puppet that came to life. And fucking Daniel Pineda is out here looking like fucking, you know, like he got in a fight with a wood chipper. So I feel like Bukakis was uh, like on wobbly legs for half of that fight. I My butthole has never been so clenched in my life than watching Bukakis. And I didn't even really have much in the Bukakis, on Bukakis in general. But at this point, my perfect parlay was still... Still riding strong. Oban Elliott put that to an end. I thought Oban Elliott was somebody else. He doesn't look like the guy who was in the cage in his topology picture whatsoever. Um, I thought Oban Elliott was a completely different guy. Did you think he was Ode Osborne? You know what? I did think he was Ode Osborne. He does look (laughs) a lot like Ode Osborne. And um, I was completely off on that one. I should have known better. Dan... Wait, we didn't triple P certified pressure Parsons. I think Dan had Oban Elliott all. He did. No, he did. He did. Okay. So, yeah. you know, another one I wanted to talk about uh, Arnold Allen, Giga Chikadze. So, dude, I mean, Arnold Allen, if you look at the early pictures of his career and Patty too, there's, there's, a, there's a meme going around. It's Arnold Woo! and Patty uh, when they were young and Arnold, Arnold and Patty now. And, you know, I'm not going to say the quiet part out loud, but uh, not I'll get like accusatory. Say, uh, he's, he's uh, you know, injected his ass. So he- injected in his asshole and i mean you know what's funny is brendan allen admits that his dad uses gear and has been on gear arnold allen bodybuilder right yeah his dad's like mr olympia guy right what did i say brendan allen oh arnold Arnold allen Allen. yeah apologies apologies to to mr allen (laughs) so i mean you know it's it's like even if allen if, if arnold doesn't know that that maybe his dad is uh you know giving him the Peter Griffin, Joe Swanson treatment, you know, putting something in the water, giving him uh, rub ons, massages and stuff, uh, you know, spitting in his mouth while he's sleeping, something like that. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy. I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm just joking, you know, for uh, legal purposes, but, Excuse me, but... it's, uh, 
clear and evident. And, and I mean, the guy, he looked, I said this during the Discord. I said, Arnold Allen looks uncomfortable to be. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want to body swap with him. He looks like everything hurts. Like, his shape of himself is not smooth. It's not like, it just looks like just mutant. But he looked amazing in there. He beat the shit out of Giga. He didn't look amazing. I mean, first of all, everyone's talking shit on Faraz Zahabi, rightfully so. Faraz Zahabi's a fucking – he went from champ to chump in my eyes. He's I hope Dan Henderson rings rings his neck. I hope Dan Henderson rings his neck too. And it's like – I used to love Faraz, but he really jumped the shark. You know what I mean? He, he really let – he got the Joe Rogan podcast uh, experience going on with him right now where, you know, he, he's he's feeling himself. He's smelling his own farts. This is Faraz Zahabi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves the smell of his own. Wait, well, what do he do? Uh, Saturday he night. Just is, he's just always on his live stream. He's got a bunch of fucking. He's got a bunch of Chris Delia fans. Like he said, he would be Dan Dan Daddy. He said all the time, calling Dan, him their king. Farasahabi said he would beat Dan Henderson's ass if he wasn't on HGH. This happened recently. What else do you yes, want to take in away the last from him? Month. You you want to, what, what what else can he not do? And by the way, the idea that like. The idea that GSP or whatever is the most clean athlete in the world is like, I mean, listen. He's, he's uh, you know, injected his ass. He's never tested positive. He's never failed a drug test. But, you know, you do, you, you take a look at him with his, with your eyeballs. You see the veins. You go, okay, I don't know. I mean, this guy's, he's, he, he seems, uh, me thinks thou, me doth think thou protest too much. Just yeah, neither did Barry Bonds. Yeah, it's like, come on. <laughs> and by the way, I'm I think Bilal, that. I think Bilal's on all the juice right now. I am libertarian when it comes to drugs. If you don't do, like, and first of all, there's stuff you can do that isn't even on the banned list, right? So it's always a cat and mouse game where you're doing stuff that is not being tested for and vice versa. But I'm just saying, if you're not trying to get every advantage, then you're the coward. You're the pussy. Like, like, oh, so, okay. So in one hand, you have a guy willing to do things that enhance his performance to win. And on another hand, you have a guy afraid of the government, <laughs> Who do I respect more? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I respect the guy who does, says, fuck the government. I'm fucking doing whatever I fucking want. You know what I mean? And it's like, by the way, like nobody cares if guys smoke weed. Nobody cares if guys do coke. Nobody cares if guys do like real like illegal shit. But everybody cares if they take stuff that fucking actually makes them perform better for us. It's like, yeah, I'd rather them do that. I don't care that. But th this isn't baseball, Luke. The, the ball, the, this is uh, is it's not hitting a ball over a fence. Okay. This is. You can hurt people. Yeah, that's the point, dummy. The point is to hurt people. That's what we want to see. <laughs> like, nobody you ever can, see like, somebody get sculled by a baseball? They can also get super hurt. <laughs> but what about the, at, at least the difference? Now, here's the argument you can make. Well, Luke, we don't want the kids who dream of being baseball players to have to do that in order to compete. Well, what person wants their kid to be a cage fighter? That, it's <laughs> inher that that's like, like it's inherently like. No, don't do that. It's dangerous, and it's not a, a skill that is like ad. Like anyway, we don't need to get on our high horse. The so. biggest parent advocates against their kids going into cage fighting is yeah, cage every fighting. parent is like Listen, is cage kids, fighters. They'd be like, no, I do this so my kids don't have to do this. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> if it's his dream, whatever. But I did this so he doesn't have to do this. You know. Yeah. Um. Patty the Batty, Patty the Batty by sub. That was uh. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about RoboCop actually. RoboCop. First, uh, sensational. What I need, sensational. No. What I need to remember is this: that Robocop he is beat the better. shit out of your boy. He beat yeah, because my out. boy thought he was a wrestler. Actually, what happened is he got rocked. He got rocked. He was like, "Actually, I don't want to do that. So let me just wrestle, and I'll put up this exactly. valiant effort in the wrestling." But it's like, no, you didn't do a valiant effort. The valiant thing would go toe to toe with him in something that you might have won, or you might have gotten your shit rocked. But you decided to wrestle and you know lose with honor. So, he had a Molly a McCann head now. in the first minute. Yeah, you're a wrestler now, exactly. He had a Molly McCann head in the first minute from those he elbows did. on the ground. Like his shit was swollen up. He looked like Mega Mind out there. CLD was a fish out of water. Every time Robocop touched him, he reacted. And yes, I think CLD is probably the more crisp, defined, like better striker in totality. But when you got Robocop slinging ham hawks at your head, like a madman and just you're reacting to every single one of those shots negatively you are getting on wobbly legs easily and then that's why you have to shoot him for the takedown like you do not want to feel that any longer you, you have a better chance of out wrestling a black belt in jujitsu than standing with him at that point like robocop is amazing i love robocop him and like iron turtle i think are 
the PPP MVPs, you know? You called him a fish out of water. He was more like the little mermaid out of water because he gets on those two little new legs of his and he starts running around that fucking cage. That's something that some of these uh, guys do a lot where th- their big thing is like running around the perimeter of the cage. CLD does that. And now that I've seen that once, mm-mm. I smell something and I ain't going to go back to him ever again. I'm not going back to that well. Yeah. Um, he's an athlete, not a fighter. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Gross. Um, but so and, is Cyril and not Gan. a morning person. Not a morning person. Yeah. But so is Cyril Gone, and he can still beat a lot of guys' asses. Like CLD is good enough to beat a lot of guys. I, I wouldn't necessarily throw the baby out with the bathwater on this one. Well, you know what it is, is that G Rod is an athletic fighter. Like he's yeah. built like Robocop, whereas Tai Tuivasa versus Cyril Gone, that's a fat shit fighter who mm-hmm. when you match him up with a guy like Cyril Gunn, it doesn't really matter how tough you are or how much you want to bring it. You're going to get the shit beat out of you. When you match him up against a Sergei Pavlovich, you're going to get the shit beat out of you because they're athletes and fighters. You know what I mean? So um, I want to get into Patty, the motherfucking Patty. So I was tossing and turning, throwing this up and down all week. And then I said to myself, Luke, think with your fucking head here. What have these guys both been talking about this whole time? There have been little hints being dropped, right? About the submission, the submission ability of patty and how bobby has never been submitted in the ufc i could have fucking swore that islam kamorad bobby green i, I thought so too War that is i think this is like a berenstein bears like mandela <laughs> effect thing that's happening and you know what's really weird luke patty after he got done the fight said i finished him three seconds faster than islam and I'm like, and I'm like, he, he was, like in, 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 in his interviews, even Islam couldn't, he's like, it's the first time he's ever been submitted to the UC. And I'm like, that was a lie, but maybe he's just doing some chael sun and I've never lost, you know. And everyone's shit. been saying it. Yeah. And, and then, and then he said it again in an interview. I've never lost, but I've also never been injured. It, it's one of those things. <laughs> and it's like, so I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like, okay, he's just lying. No problem. Patty lies. But then, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so I, I have to Google it at one point. I'm like, you know, Islam actually Bobby Green. It says TKO. I'm like, I remember Bobby tapping. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm mixing up the Dan Hooker fight. Maybe. I don't know. But either way, uh, I started to think about it more and more. And I was like, okay, Patty is not going to stand there and strike with Bobby Green. He fucking can't. He is going to be coming out, trying to get a finish, trying to get a big statement win. And how is he going to be able to get that with a submission? Because then he'll still be able to say, I proved everybody wrong, you know? And here's my thing with Patty, man. <laughs> He keeps like being like wondering why people doubt him and want him to lose. Patty, it's because you hit the scene and think about all the things he was saying. They're gonna find out who the fucking boy is. They're gonna they're, they're gonna know who the fucking boy is. You know what I mean? Like, he kept saying that, which I like. I think it's cool. But he just kept saying, like, yeah, you know, they're gonna know who puts the bums in the seats. Like he was coming in all like hot and like talking all chat and shite. And then, you know, you have your first performance against Luigi Vanarimini, not in the UFC anymore. You get dropped. You have another performance against some other guy, uh, Fernando Cor- Cornando Vargas or whatever, dropped again and hurt and not, you know what I mean? Then you have the lackluster performance against Jared Gordon and you come and you say, it wasn't even close. I, you know, and Dave Portnoy <laughs> and the big cat are sitting there with the wigs on. You literally got all of this praise and attention from the barstool crowd and, and the casual fan base. And you got all this praise and attention and you were demanding all this stuff. I'm not even talking about the Errol Hawani thing. Fuck Errol Hawani. He should make him pay. But what I'm saying is you you did the Jake Paul thing the whole time. And that's why people wanted you to lose. It's not like everybody was like serious about Patty will never have a ranking. Like he's like, he really is taking that shit and letting it stick to him. It's like, and it's actually. And people think you're going to lose because you're like, I told me coaches, I don't think I could do it this this time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and you get he gets fat as fuck in between fights. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? He gets rich between fights. It's like two things you don't want to see. A guy not respecting his diet and his training in the interim, you know, and a guy who live in the bad lifestyle, and a guy who is has more money and and like doesn't really need to fight as much, right? So like, those are two things that people take into account. Kids. And yeah, he tells his coaches, I was suffering from depression. I didn't want to even do it despite my coaches. It's like, okay, yeah, like, all right, like we're gonna bet against you then. Like, but anyway, uh really phenomenal. I bet Patty 100 bucks on him by submission at the at the eleventh hour, literally as he's walking to the cage. And honestly, I was looking at him, I go, he looks kind of pale. He looks kind of like, you know, uh, he was tired. And he admitted it. He said, I was kind of tired in the back, but I knew once my music hit, it was going to be fine. He was right. But I kind of looked at it. I was like, he he's going to need to get a submission here. 100 bucks on Patty, plus 450 by sub. Cha-ching. One of my, you know, a, a big part of, of the winnings, right? 
that I had was in that. Um, and then, you know, we move on to Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades. I kind of thought it was an early stoppage. Really, I just kind of think Mark Goddard's a bitch. I hate Mark Goddard. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was going to get any better. I think that the stoppage was early. Yeah. But I don't think Curtis was going to be able to miraculously find his way out of that. Like, well, just let him go out. Like, let it let it be done. Like, let it just let it happen. Like, I don't. There will be why. blood. Yeah. Like, why is it that but if I get to Tom hit him kick? with like seven unanswered shots? So it's like Mark Goddard's the king of stopping these fights early. He's he talk about somebody who loves the smell of his own fucking farts. I mean, Faraz, take a back seat so Mark can grab that cup and smell his own fucking farts because Mark Goddard loves the smell of his own farts. Um, Mark Goddard, I hate you. Uh, I, I, I hate the way you ref. I hate the way you talk. I hate the way he was looking at Tom. Who was it? Was it Tom Aspinall or was it? I hate it, the way uh, that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. It was Arnold <laughs> Allen. When he, when Arnold Allen was, when the, we were waiting for the decision to be read, he was like looking at Arnold Allen like, there you go, lad. What a good performance. He was like talking to him. Like, <laughs> Nobody has more bias than Mark Goddard going into a fight. Hated Colby Covington. Then Mike or Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping hey Mark, is. Hey Mark, you don't like Trump? Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you like then, Mark? Who do you like then? Fucking idiot. Yeah, anyway. uh, Mark. We also don't need your opinion because you're you not a citizen. Don't need your opinion, Mark. Stay in fucking. If you don't like our country, get the fuck out, Mark. I hope when you get your morning paper every day. I hope every day that Mark Goddard walks outside for his morning paper. It rains on him. I hope that when he goes inside from the rain, his tea's gone cold. I hope that biscuit he bites into is so stale he chips a tooth. I don't like you, Mark Goddard. Okay. Um, Curtis Blades, you know, stupid, dumb, idiot. Uh, you know, but Tom Aspinall, the man. Tom Aspinall, the man, you know. Um, no, Curtis Blades was winning, like, up to that point. And, like, exactly. that's and the shame of it backwards. all. Ah! Like flailing around, it's like, come on, Curtis. I do think a Tom Aspinall roll. is just like really nasty, dude. Like I, Aspinall I versus Jones, who we got? Jones. Jones, dude, come on, fucking John Bones. Jones. USA. Now, honestly, USA. I mean, here's the thing. Here's my thing with John Jones. Everybody just wants more and more and more and more from John Jones. It's like he already was the greatest light heavyweight of all time. Moved up. Yeah, not really that impressive to beat Cyril Gon, but hey, he was the man in the seat when John arrived, right? Beat Cyril gone. And now it's like almost like everyone is everyone is so quick to be like, all right, now fight Tom Aspinall. It's like, where were you guys three <laughs> fights ago when Tom Tom's only two wins are Sergey and Blades? And guess who else beat Blades? Fucking Derek Lewis. Guess who else beat Sergey? Alexander Volkov. So why not let Derek Lewis fight John Jones? Why not let Alexander Volkov fight John Jones? Tom Aspinall has no other good wins besides that. And they released a stat. It said, uh, let me show this stat real quick. Was it least amount of time in the octagon or something per fight? Yeah, least amount of time in the octagon per fight. And the people they were comparing him with should be the glaring piece yeah. of information here. Okay, so it says, Tom Aspinall, shortest average fight time in UFC history. Two minutes, two seconds for Tom Aspinall. Here's the other folks in the top five. Drew McFedries. Nobody watches this show's ever heard of him. I have. You haven't. Terrence McKinney. Sucks. <laughs> James Sandman <laughs> Irving. Best known for getting fucking knocked out by Anderson Silva on a fucking side mission. When he and called Rondo the kick. Rousey, whoever that is. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're in lofty company there, Tom. You know what that stat means? It means you haven't been tested. It means you haven't been challenged. It means they haven't given you anybody. It means you're in the heavyweight division where everybody fucking sucks. You know what I mean? So I would rather. Well, if they can't take me to deep waters, why, why even bring it up? Yeah, we get it. It's because you're not fighting Fedor, you're not fighting Randy Couture, you're not fighting Brock Lesnar, you're not fighting anybody good that was in the golden era of the heavyweight division. You're fighting scrubs. And John Jones came in youngest heavyweight, light heavyweight champion in the UFC, beating legends who were not past their prime at that point. Then, yeah, he was bigger. Okay, okay, he was bigger. I'm sorry, is it a size advantage or is it a disadvantage? Like, Mike Tyson never was bigger than any opponent he ever fought. So, I think it's... Neither was DC. DC, yeah, it's like... Okay, it doesn't really matter if they're taller. It doesn't really matter if you're longer. This is a. This only matters at the range in which it matters. You know what I mean? There, it has nothing to do with anything. Oh, so 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 uh, reach is the biggest thing, and John Jones is biggest. What about Stefan Struve? What about Stefan Struve? Why didn't? Why wasn't he the greatest of all time? Okay, so well, it's height. What about Stefan Struve? What about who else had a big reach that was that came in recently? Uh, 
the Cuban guy, uh, Despanja, Despanja. Yeah. Why isn't he the best of all time? It has nothing to do with that. It's about John Jones' fight IQ. It's about his psychoticness. It's about a million different things, but it has nothing to do with John being bigger than these guys. So my point is, John goes on one of the most impressive runs, one of the most impressive perennial divisions in the entire UFC, and then goes up and wins, and everybody wants to talk shit and be like, well, now you need to fight Tom. How about now he fucking doesn't? How about Tom needs to fucking get, I don't know. How about when Tom breaks Stipe's record, then we'll talk. How about when, you know, Tom... It only will take one more fight. All right. (laughs) One more. One more then. One more then. Um, if there's nobody in line, I mean, none of the heavyweights can fucking, you know, you none of the heavyweights can can get, you can, can't get a fucking noise out of these Cyril Gan can't even read a contract, let alone sign one. So that brings us to the main event real quick. Um, and, you know, it's Bilal Muhammad, Leon Edwards. I picked Bilal on the show. Dan picked Bilal on the show. Alex picked Leon. Alex swayed me over to Leon on the show. But as I watched all the pre-fight stuff after I did the show, I was back on Bilal the whole time. Bilal was in all my bets. I hedged on Bilal, on Leon as the fight was going on once I could get him at like plus 500 at times. Um, so that's where some of my losses came into play uh, in terms of like that total of lo- losses. Like a lot of my losses were on situations where I knew I had a winning bet on the other side, right? So I had Bilal by decision, guys. I, plus 300, Bilal by decision. That was the only way he was going to win. Bilal by decision, 127.5 for 573.75. Bilal, money line 72 for 162. That was live. Um, you know, I, I I cleaned up on Bilal. The fight flew by to me. I didn't think it was boring at all. I thought it was inspiring. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, you know, at even the third round, a little bit back and forth, where Leon kind of, you know, took a round. So it wasn't guaranteed Bilal was going to win should he uh, withstand the rest of the rounds. Loved the fight. Thought it was amazing. Uh, Bilal, man, you know, hats off to you. Hats fucking off to you. Here's what I'll say about Bilal most of all. He was a underdog in his last five fights. So imagine you put a hundred bucks on Bilal five fights ago, compound all your winnings. He's like Christian McCaffrey touchdown, anytime touchdown score. You would have fucking been like $60,000 over the last five fights. If you just started with like a hundred bucks, you know what I mean? I don't know the exact math, but you'd be really cleaning up if you were a Bilal truther and had been betting everything and betting your winnings on Bilal. Um, Love it. You know, Leon guys, this was always going to happen this way. I said, Leon is going into a fight that he thinks is going to be easy. Bilal is going into a fight he knows is going to be hard. Bilal is not going to be surprised in there if the going gets tough. Leon will be surprised, and he will. And if he could lose the first round, he will lose the whole rest of them because Leon quits later in the fight. Leon gives up on himself. He needs to be fucking brought back to life by his coach all the time. Didn't work this time. Uh, he also has a Super Bowl hangover effect in that, you know, yeah, you can pull that power up and hit that Nas Hydraulics with the fucking motivation once maybe twice, but not every single fucking time. You can't keep the motivation, especially when your opponent is not somebody you have to get up for. It was always written on the wall. Even Cody Safdick picked Bilal Muhammad. It was always written on the wall that Bilal was going to win this fight. He was fighting for something greater than himself. He was fighting for Palestine. He was fighting for the uh, the respect that he felt he deserved. And God damn, if he didn't get it done, shout out to Bilal Muhammad. You won me money. I love you. And uh, he did what Colby Covington couldn't do. You know, I mean, you got to think Colby Covington, who I love, might be one of the most bitch ass fighters right now in the sense of you sat there and couldn't get it done against Usman. And then you watched Leon do what you couldn't do to Usman twice. Then now Leon has the title. You fight Leon, can't get it done against him either. Then you watch Bilal do what you couldn't do against Leon. Bilal's better than you. Leon's better than you. Usman's better than you. You're not top one, top two, or top three welterweights of all time. You're not even top four. So, shit. I, you know, I don't know what else to say. I love Colby Covington, but he is, he is, uh, he's his own worst enemy in a lot of the, in a lot of these situations, you know, holding out a lot, not having activity, not keeping that same hunger, not keeping that same aggression, making money outside of the UFC in different ways. So I'm sorry to say it, but Colby Covington, um, I'm sorry I called you a bitch ass. That was kind of rude. If I ever see you, I will try to get a picture and I will say what's up. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it's like, hey, you, you watch everybody fuck your bitch. You watch everybody fuck your bitch. You got, you got Usman fucking your bitch. You got Leon fucking your bitch. Now, but Law ha- Muhammad fuck your bitch. And the bitch is the UFC welterweight title. So um, I want to get your guys' thoughts on that. And then I have a very special surprise segment uh, before we get into next week's card. So talk through the main event real quick. I'm going to take a pee and then surprise new segment just for Dan. It's a surprise. Dan has no idea what's about. Oh, to what the hell? This is going to suck. All right. Whatever it is, I guess I'm game for it. 
Um, the only thing I could add to that, I guess, is and I think DC touched upon this on the broadcast, if you were listening to it. Um, Bilal had some swag in the cage right before the fight started. You know, the big uh, the big word across sports these days is aura. Bilal had all the aura going into that. Um, even, you know, I talked about this in our group chat. Um, during the face-offs, right? Leon tried to punk him. He tried to G-check him. And then Bilal was like, didn't even blink, right? Like, just felt like nothing towards him. Nothing towards that that act of psychological aggression. It was like, he even laughed at him. You know, I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, so Bilal had, had all the good good energy going towards him and uh, just absolute swagger in the cage. And uh, it showed. Once I saw that, I was like, damn, it's over. He's going to dominate. I picked him, and but, but looking at his... Uh, just the, the the charisma, the swagger in the cage before I had, he's got this all the way. So played out like that. I wouldn't call it aura. I'd call it juice. Uh, when <laughs> these guys first fought, that was when Leon Edwards came into the cage, looked humongous. Everybody was like, holy shit. What the fuck has Leon Edwards been up to? He literally. Nah, just diet, man. Just diet, man. I got my guy Ian, Ian Lowry, the fucking guy with the diet, diet, diet plans. And uh, <laughs> looks like a Canadian. You know, Bilal, Bilal looked like Hasbulla next to fucking Leon Edwards in the first fight. And now in the second fight, Bilal Muhammad is magically just way more jacked, way bigger head, way bigger body. Everything's bigger on him. And, uh, you know, that sucked. He's Not everything the, if he's on the juice. He, yeah, he's on the juice. Uh, I'm just surprised we buried. He's, he's uh, you know, ejected his ass. So he- I'm surprised we buried the lead. Didn't talk about Manel Cop versus Muhammad Makayev. Oh uh, yeah. Me personally, me personally, what happened going into the main event was I could have cashed out for like 350 bucks. That would have put me up 150. Get me back in the green. Didn't do it. I had another bet that had Curtis Blades on it. If that one would have won, I definitely would have cashed out one of them because I had Leon Edwards to end the night on both of them. Uh, but you know. Put my balls on the table for you yet again. Smashed them uh, and lost again with Leon Edwards. You could have you could have bet fifty bucks on Bilal by decision, and you'd be at zero at least. But here's the deal: we'll talk about Manel Cop versus Muhammad Makayev in a second. I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about Molly McCann because there was one of the three of us who, and I got to show you guys this. I I couldn't <laughs> believe this myself. You know, I knew Dan picked Molly McCann on the show, right? Um. So I'm going to go to the open bet sheet real quick. And uh, this is our open bet sheet. You go, you get access to it in the Patreon. You wouldn't have wanted access to dance because look at this red fucking line, guys. <laughs> look at this red line. It, it never ends. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14, 15, 16. It keeps going. 17, 18, 19, 19. Maybe more. I might have lost count. 19 individual fucking uh, parlays that Dan had Molly McCann in. Molly McCann was a minus 350 favorite. Molly McCann had no business being a minus 350 favorite. No woman should be a minus 350 favorite. And instead of just like, I don't know, not putting her on any, (laughs) Dan decided to put her on all of them. So this, you know, this brings us to a new segment that we have on the show. Uh, And the segment is going to be called Donkey of the Week. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the segment that's already used. Called, you can't do that. The segment is going to be called "Casual to Casual" because clearly Dan is the most casual fan, casual better we've ever seen. Ah, uh, so come I, on, don't label me that. I so, do a, I do a fucking podcast every week for the past five years. Oh, you're going like, to get podcast. I'm not casual. You're still going to do a podcast. You're going to host the segment. Me and Alex are going to part stage left, and you're going to host this new segment called "Casual to Casual," where we bring on. The other most casual guy I know, a guy whose two favorite fighters are Conor McGregor and Patty the Batty. We're bringing on my little cousin. And guys, listen, you're probably going to hate this segment. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. You're probably going to hate it. But I made, here a promise, studio? I made a promise to my grandmother on her deathbed. I said, I will be nice to my little cousin. I will be nice to him. I promise you. I held her hand. And, you know, she was a great gambler. This, this woman was a fucking great gambler. And we don't want to have a ghost cursing us as we proceed into next week we need as the newt as the tale of newt proved voodoo voodooistic voodooist voodooistic voodooistic ritual is paramount okay so we are going to bring in my little cousin who has been dying to be on the show for five years now we're going to bring him in to do a special segment for about five minutes here casual to casual him and dan are going to talk through the molly mccann fight 
Uh, my cousin's going to tell you how he lost all of his parlays because he thinks it's so easy. And then he'll give you his best bets, and we'll have the best casual bets of next weekend before we hop into the breakdown. <laughs> so please welcome to the show, my cousin, Casual Adam. Casual Adam, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hey. What's up? Yo. So, Adam, you know, I, you heard that introduction. You heard what Dan did. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to let you and Dan just kind of chat through the card. Let Dan kind of – you guys can talk through the main event, talk through the Miami Camp fight, talk through the Manel Cap fight if you want. But uh, the me and Alex will come back in in a second because me and Alex don't need to be part of this casual talk. We're, we're some pretty fucking uh, real deal hardcores here, you know. So uh, without further ado, guys, casual Yeah, talk. yeah, yeah. Dan, Molly McCann, really? Yeah. So here's the deal. I, I'll I'll explain. Actually, let me let me get on your level real quick. Give me one okay. second. All right. Hold yeah, on yeah. one sec. I'll tell you while you're getting ready. Um, I chose uh, Brazil for that. I I knew damn well to take Brazil on that fight. Uh, I didn't like Molly McCann going in, and I was listening to the pod, uh, and you guys were like, "Yeah, Molly McCann's not it. Molly McCann's not it." And then Dan's like, "Oh." Yeah, Molly McCann's in. I'm like, yeah, I don't trust Dan. So I went Brazil. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, I actually did end up having – oh, there we go. I actually did end up having a lot of your picks. Anyway, I had a lot of your picks. I I was six for seven. It was a seven-pick parlay, five bucks to turn 257. I had six fights, all won. All my fights were winning. Were they all my picks that you were going off of? I don't know if they were all yours. I don't oh, remember okay, exactly. Right. Um, you know, I had, I had Patty. I had, obviously – one of my favorite fighters. Yeah, casual. I know, I know. I also like yeah. Forrest Griffin, super casual. But I had Patty. I had Brazil. I had Tom Aspinall. And then I had Leon Edwards. I I thought he was a lock. I thought he was it. And then just got shafted by Bilal. And I, I went to bed angrier than I probably went to bed in the last year and a half, two years. I was texting my buddy the entire fight. And we're both just texting each other like, oh, yeah, we're cooked. We're getting shit on. Like, it's not it. That's all good. I mean, uh, you know, you play this game long enough, you get cooked a a fairly decent amount. Um, I guess at this segment, I have to do a little explaining on my end. Yes, I did go all in on Molly McCann. Um, What was my thought process? Well, number one, greed. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. A a number, uh, a minus 350, uh, a female fight here. That's absolute greed, just corruption and greed. All the way through. Um, But you know what? I just thought we've seen this play out. Molly McCann at home. They love feeding her up. uh, Easy fights. She gets a spinning back elbow finish. The crowd goes wild. That's that's nuts. Yeah, I'm going to have a zoo in here. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I I thought it was a layup. I I went off the number. I went off the line. Minus 350 at home. It's going to be easy peasy. You know, free space on the bingo card. Obviously, it wasn't. Am I going to learn from this? I hope so. I don't know if I will, but I hope so. There was um, no I'm, value. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is value. There's always value. Like, you, you go from winning 150 yeah. grand to 175 grand. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. Dan, you were in no danger. You were in no <laughs> danger of winning I, 150, 150. No, no, no. Because let me tell you this, guys. Dan sent us this parlay that he built, and I even tailed him a little bit in it. Uh, I, I, I had it in my open bet sheet as Dan's plan uh, because he was so <laughs> brash about it. And I was sending him Neville Goddard stuff. I was sending him all sorts of stuff. I'm like, all right, let's see if Dan can take some of these lessons, you know. And the first three fights lost on the parlay. Like, it was, <laughs> <laughs> let me see. So Dan had, I mean, the, at least the one I built. It, so it was over two and a half in the Mick Parkin fight. <laughs> over one and a half in the Sam Patterson fight. <laughs> that fight also included Pracnia. It also included Pineda. It also included Christian Leroy Duncan. Damn. So I'll say this. I did have a 200 grand parlay up to the Molly McCann fight. That sunk it. But let's say she won. There was only two other losses on that. It was uh, CLD, of course. And uh, I think one. Oh, I guess uh, Daniel Pineda. No, actually, I think that was a live. That'd be I had over one and a half on that. So I was pretty damn close. You know, I'm, my whole thing is I'm no longer going to be conservative, Dan. You know, just going for a couple hundred bucks here and there on the weekend. I'm going for change my life parlays. I'm going for equip my job parlays. Hundred grand, two hundred grand, three hundred grand. That's what I'm shooting for. I don't care if I you know lose the first couple because, like the FBI says. You only need to get lucky once, and that's what I'm shooting for, folks. Listen, every week Adam sends us these parlays in a group chat with just me and Alex. 
And it's it, it, for many weeks, it was like, it's almost like you don't even watch the show, Adam. And then he's like, well, you know, I, I didn't actually watch the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll be honest. It was the first, it was one of the first goes, episodes I watched was last week. Um, I took into consideration and then Luke said, oh, wow, I don't hate your picks this week. Yeah. I mean, they, they still didn't really align with Alex's picks, but the at the end of the day, it's like, he'll send me these plays. He goes, what do you think? I'm like, well, you should know what I think. If you watch the show, I don't have a single one oh. of those picks. In don't ever season. ask us what we think. That's the most yeah. annoying thing in the world. You got to watch the show. Then you'll know exactly what we think. Yeah. Well, listen, Adam, so, um, first time, first time caller, long time <laughs> fan. Um, couple of questions. Let's hear it. How did you get your start podcasting? How did I get my start? Um, just a lot of listening to a lot, you know, uh, back in the day, uh, you would listen to a lot of Rogan. So that turned me on to Rogan. I've um, never listened to that show. I, I can't. <laughs> when you look into it. Yeah. Um, and then I slowly turned into listening to like Jocko, Jocko Willings podcast. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I could never get into the sports podcast. Yes, I've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. I, all I can do now is apologize and move on. I don't know what I'll... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so so how how did you, uh, you know, get your start gambling as well? Oh, that's what, a good question. What was your first bet? What was your first big hit? First what, bet. What, what okay. got you? Have you, have what, you what got had you? a big hit is the question. I have had a big hit. So um, when I was like 16 or 17, I, oh, I saw... Illegal, 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 illegal. I saw illegal. my brother and my mom on DraftKings, and I was like, I see how addicted you guys are to it. I'm not... That's kidding. fucking illegal. Yeah, it was, and I didn't do it. But when I turned 18, I was like, ah, it's kind of tempting. You gotta be 21. <laughs> when I was 18, I saw my parents gambling on my brother, and then when I turned 21, I got my DraftKings account, and I would only ever bet like a buck, two bucks maybe, and then... Just recently, last month, my friend got me onto FanDuel with his like code or link, and I got two hundred and fifty dollars in free bets. So, I made a huge Phillies parlay, huge Phillies parlay. I think five bucks to turn like three fifty, and it was the bottom of the ninth inning, and I needed a Bohm hit, a Harper hit, and a Casty hit, and they all hit wow. for the last legs of my parlay, and I won three hundred fifty bucks. Sick. Yeah. Very nice. Well, okay. So we. we what makes you, you just... think you're better than me? <laughs> I don't. Actually know. I I've lost way more than I've gained. I know that for a fact. It's just, it's something have that. You, have you? Can you go go to your uh, financial? Pull up your financial uh, statement. Oh man. Let us know. You're gonna get know. in trouble with this. On what? DraftKings or Fanduel? Well, you said you had the big hit on Fanduel, and you were playing with house money. So I mean, it seems like maybe you know Fanduel would be more positive, but. While I'll Adam pulls that up, you know, while Adam gets that information ready, I'm going to take him out for a second. We're going to talk a little Manel Cop, Muhammad Bakai. We'll bring Adam back in in a second. So, here's my thing with Manel Cop. I love him. I love everything that's come out of his mouth ever, ever. And uh, I love the way he fights. And I love the way he fought that night. You know, he had a broken toe. You know, he he was he was doing his thing. He was avoiding the <laughs> takedown. He had a lot. He had a lot more reason to be tentative than Makai. That's what I'll say, right? Not to mention, he already got his on Makai. He already busted his ass open. Once, you know what I mean? It's, it's, Makayev couldn't have made himself look worse. Here's what I'll say, right? Thank these two boys for making flyweight fucking interesting, right? I mean, we have, we don't have Henry Cejudo anymore. We don't have Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson anymore. We don't really have Davidson Figueredo. We don't have, we don't have a lot of these. Is he even a flyweight? We don't have a lot. We don't even have Not a anymore. lot of, we don't even have a lot of these guys, you know what I mean? Uh, anymore to make the division interesting. But, what we had this weekend was an interesting flyweight fight. I was more excited for this fight than just about any fight, which gave the most room for disappointment if, if you're going by that standard, right? So, you know, backstory, you know, Manel Cop busts him up in the PI. You had, uh, what's the guy's name with the glasses? Silva. Uh, the coach? John Silva. John Silva. John Silva know. was like, this guy's a fucking psychopath, dude. He, he, he breaks the story for us. That was really great entertainment. But then you have Manel, uh, Muhammad Makayev, who like wants to get his and apparently, and even Makayev admitted to this in his pre post fight press conference, he admitted that he asked him for a picture. And when he asked him for a picture, he sucker punched him. Now, you know, he said he wanted a picture to symbolize peace for <laughs> your Muslim brothers. Real quick, real quick, Adam, what's your net total? What's your wins loss statement? Net total is 270 bucks. I'm up. 
Uh, on Vandal? Total winnings is 668. My bets are 398. This guy's a casual better, dude. 398. Dan lost that this weekend, dude. This is <laughs> My man, Adam's only like 22 years old or whatever, but I'm just saying, Adam, you got to lose a lot more, okay? You're going to have to pay taxes on that. You better fucking start losing. I just got a job. I'll be betting more. Don't you worry. Okay. Now I'm interested. So you're up how much? 300 and... 270. I'm up through 270. Okay, 270. All right. So is, is your only other sports book uh, DraftKings? Yeah. All right, now pull that up too. I want to, and we'll, I, and then we'll see. We'll see because you're actually way ahead of these two guys. I'm, you're I'm, way I'm ahead of these two guys. Yeah, no fucking time. shit. He just started gambling. Wait, like <laughs> said, wait till he starts getting actually into it. You'll lose every. You'll lose That's your house. You'll lose your clothes off your back. Don't you worry, well, Adam. You'll get silver there. medal too. I'm gonna give Adam a little silver medal here. Hold on. He's in second place right now. <laughs> Uh, just joined the show already in second place. <laughs> you, you two bums are in the fucking. You guys, you guys are like, uh, you guys are like degenerate uh, child support payment guys over here. You gotta like, you gotta just, you gotta get back to black over here. You know. All right, Maybe weren't you like oh, minus three hundred last week? You went to sever the tail. Minus of the one thirty. Then- I was minus one thirty. So even at my lowest, I'm not as low as you are. Uh, even at my lowest, I'm. Not uh, as low as you are. Yo, okay. listen, we only said goodbye with words. You know what I mean? What's that song, everybody? What's that song? Back to Black, Amy Winehouse, standing now, except to get back to black. All right, so while Adam pulls that up, I'm going to remove him again. Manel Kopp, Muhammad Makayev, two and a half minutes go by, and DC says two strikes have been thrown. I mean, this was this was Derek Lewis versus Nganu. This was Rose Nama Yunus versus Carla Esparza. This was boring, except for the fact that Makayev was cheating his ass off, kicking him in the nuts, poking him in the eyes, pulling his pants down. I mean, it was getting sexy in there. He was pulling his pants out and showing that booty, showing that uh, – well, I don't even know where Manel Cop's from. He's from some crazy-ass place. But he was pulling his pants down, showing everybody that booty. And, uh, look, I thought Manel Cop won. You know, those elbows he was landing off the back, he was piecing them up with them elbows, um, hitting them in that that nerve. Go ahead, Adam. I have bet a total of $645 on DraftKings. I am down 39 Let's fucking go. All right. So hold on. So that means uh, quick maths. Uh, oh, I, I meant to hit. I didn't mean to mute him. I meant to edit his name. Quick maths. 39. That's uh, 29. 229 or 21. 31? 231? Oh, 31. 31. I yeah. dropped my accounting. <laughs> man. I don't know. 231. Not a bad. Hey, listen, not bad. So now all you have to do, Adam, is keep that number in your mind for the rest of your gambling career because then you won't end up like me down, you know, uh, anyway, we'll not talk about that. But so, <laughs> yeah, what's that number? Guys. Get it's back to black. Day. Give Dan a round of applause for putting Molly McCann in 29 individual meatball parlays. Day. Nine. It's meatball day. One more meatball time. Day. 19. Three times. Day. All right. It's amazing. Uh, so, Manel Kopp, Muhammad Mikhaev, the the only thing worse than the first two and a half minutes of inactivity was the hug at the end, was the fucking knob slobbing at the end, Mikhaev pulling him in. Oh, everybody, be nice, be nice. Shut the fuck up. You, you should have been nice before. You should have been nice before. Why? You, Chael Sonnen said it best, you know. He he talked about it on his YouTube channel about how he was a kid, and I forget which fight he was watching, uh, but he said he was watching a boxing match, and it was a bitter rivalry, and at the end of the fight, they asked him, you know, can you put the beef aside? He says, oh, yeah, man, we just did that to promote the fight. And he said, I never felt more robbed in my life than in that moment where I was invested in the drama. I was invested in the rivalry. I was invested in the beef. And then they sucked it all away from me in that moment. I sh- I wanted to see them break out. And, you know, I think the best punishment for both of them, run it fucking back. If I'm Dana White, I go, uh-uh, run it back. Not good enough. Maybe you'll fight this time. Maybe you'll actually fucking fight this time. But Dana White, an even more suitable punishment, Dana White has cut Muhammad Makai, or at least said, Hey, at least laid the groundwork for cutting him. He said, you know, I'm going to uh, – do you know what he said, Dan? Do you know what he said, Adam? Yeah, he said, he's going to get the best – PFL is going to get the best. Yeah, he's going back to PFL. Yeah, he, he said, hey, yeah. it looks I'm like the PFL, PFL is going to get a really good undefeated guy. Good luck to him. That was cold as fucking nice. Vintage Dana White. Amazing. I, I love it. Dana, never stop being you. Never stop doing that. I got Hunter Campbell's number in my cell phone. I'm tempted to call him right now and make and say, put the fucking boss on the phone, Hunter. Uh, so just to tell you that you're doing a great job from the RNC to the UFC. <laughs> Dana White is killing the game. He's doing the best job ever. Everybody respects you. Everybody loves you. Don't ever, you know, let's not turn. Let, 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 let's stop there. We'll just stop there. Okay. We'll just stop right there. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Dana doesn't give a fuck. Um, all right. So Adam Tech. 
take us through, you know, you lost on, because Adam had a pretty good par. Like, he, he's in the positive, and he would be even more in the positive if Leon Edwards had won. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, Adam, I put the Maluk on you. I, I, we were uh, chatting in the, in the group chat, and, and uh, I was the only one, me, Alex, and Dan, I'm the only one who has Bilal Muhammad. And, you know. No, I had Bilal Muhammad. I picked him. You didn't even fucking pick him on the show. You, in the group you were You were already fucking, you were already had your head in the pillow, biting the pillow at that point. So, uh, let's see. Uh. I think, yeah, Adam said, uh, you know, what, what did you say in the group chat? You said, no, Alex was like, no way, dude. Or sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, no, he said, the Lord hates a coward. I'm just, I'm staying. Because you said your cash out was 112 with Leon left in your parlay. So Adam was going to win $5 bet to pay $257. Muhammad Mikhaev, Bruno Brazil, Nathaniel Wood. Bruno Brazil, Danny had Bruno Brazil in that parlay. <laughs> With Daniel Wood, Arnold Allen, and uh, I guess, you know, at the end of it, it was a uh, – how many legs? And you used a 50% parlay boost. So, yeah, Arnold Allen, Patty Pimblett, Tom Aspinall, and Leon Edwards. So it was, what, a seven-legger? You're frozen. He's frozen, guys. Seven legs, yeah. Seven legs. Seven legs. One off of the spider. Through. And he stands to win two fifty seven on a five dollar bet. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, if Leon wins, and uh, you know he basically is like, my cash out is one hundred and twelve with just Leon left. And you know he's referencing Bilal crying when he got poked in the eyes, which we all know that was cowardly. We say it on the show all the time. That was cowardly. Bisping was commentating that night. Bilal's writhing around, crying in my eye, my eye. Some of us only even have one useful eye. Michael Bisping won the title with one eye. The first fight listed on DraftKings right after Bilal Muhammad is Sharapova Magomedov, who has one eye. I mean, there's a lot. You should be allowed to fight with one eye. And forget Palestine. You did nothing for the one-eyed people of the world. You didn't motivate them at all. You might have motivated the Palestinians, the Gazans, but you didn't motivate any of the one-eyed people when you said, it's impossible to fight with one eye. Much like Chris Curtis did. Chris Curtis, you're a bitch too. Um, But. Who's not friends with Sean Strickland anymore. That's why he's a, the biggest True. bitch of all time. Like, that's why it's like no love lost. Chris Curtis used to watch our show, and then we, you know, one of us picked against him one week, and he cried in the comments. It's like, hey, Chris, we were never <laughs> friends, and you cast Sean Strickland aside for much fucking less. So, you know, it's like, w- whatever, Curtis, you're you're a coward. Chris Curtis, who says he wants to go to Valhalla and yet can't fight with one eye. Uh, don't ever talk don't about Valhalla. Valhalla. Don't ever fucking talk about Valhalla until you put a newt on a rock, a newt's tail on a rock, and pray to the fucking gods of Valhalla. You don't ever talk about Valhalla. So I said, I started to put the Maluk in the group chat. You know, he, he I go, uh, I said, you know, he said, the Lord, he said, the Lord hates the coward. I said, the Lord's taking a back seat on this one. Allah is driving the car here. <laughs> and then I go, I was like, I can't. And then, then I go, I go, you know what? I go, I can't see how Leon loses. Actually. He's definitely going to win. Leon is a hundred percent going to win. It's a lock. And Adam's like, knock on wood. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I'm like, he is going to win. <laughs> and uh, I knew right then and there that I had put the Maluk on you guys. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to putting a Maluk against my friend. Grandma was yet. right there behind your shoulder doing that shit, too. She was you going like this the entire time. <laughs> a, me and Adam come from a, a, a deep line of degenerate gamblers who never had a fucking penny to show for their efforts. And it's all being paid back to us, much like Madame Zeroni and stanley yelnets right what a call i am carrying i am carrying zero is that his name zero. i'm, ca- zero. I, I I'm carrying around. the holes up the hill i'm carrying i'm digging up them holes and <laughs> i am taking back my birthright for my dead ancestors my ancestors lift me they guide me they fly with me and like a phoenix i rose from the ashes this fucking weekend 546 dollars i'm coming for everyone's ass once i get back ahead of head on a thousand we restart the whole campaign of just betting the whole thousand again so hey we might hit zero again but we also might hit a hundred thousand we also might be able to finally build the house that the parlay is built everybody so um we're gonna do it we're gonna do it big the show's gonna keep growing and if you're not with us right now if you're not in the patreon right now i will fucking remember you and i will and, and if you're johnny come lately Try to find something. Hold on. <laughs> if you're Johnny come lately, uh, I don't have any drops for that one, but if you're Johnny come lately, you know, go fuck yourself. So uh, 
what do we do next? Okay, Adam, you got some best bets for us next week. So this next statement is casual best bets. Adam's going to give his best three casual best bets, and he's going to get out of here so we can break down the next card because I have things to do and plans for my evening. Um, so, Adam, the floor is yours. I hope you came prepared. I want at least three of the best casual bets. I know Cedricus Dumas is going to be on there. So, because uh, you, you, you love Cedricus Dumas. This guy loves Cedricus Dumas. I'm kidding. Is he frozen again? Why aren't you left? Okay. All right. Uh, I'm right here. I'll be right back. Here's the trio. Uh, you guys take it away. Give Adam your takes without give, spoiling what your picks are going to be. Um, just kind of hear him out with his best bets. Guys, we're going to make this kind of maybe a once a month thing, some casual bets, you know, whenever it's appropriate, whenever one of us, you know, uh, we, we need to do this. So, yeah, um, I, I got to pee. That, that's really what this is about. I got to pee. So, I'm not doing a uh, – actually, yeah, I am doing a drinkers bet. Uh, so – I actually I have the Drickus bet and then I have the last two uh, main card that are my three best bets. Um, Drickus Dumas and uh, Dennis. I'm going Dennis. I'm going Dennis. I, I like him a little bit more. I do. I I think he. I think he says. I know he's a plus one eighty, and I know Dumas is a negative two twenty. But I just I like Dennis. I don't know. I like the I like the pick. I like the Russian. I like. You know, little it's an inch shorter, two inch less reach advantage, but I don't know. I think he's got fighting him. I think he's I think he's got that. How do you think the fight goes? Like, how do you see it playing out? Um, I think it goes three rounds. I think Dennis gets a knockout in the third round. I think Dumas pieces him up for the first two, but I think Dennis gets lucky with a hook. Ooh, I like it. Very specific. That's how that's how I think it's gonna happen. I mean, great enough, I'll be wrong because I'm a casual, but I don't think this fight's going to happen. I don't think they're going to let Dumas out of the country. Yeah, Nick Diaz has Into travel the issues, but Dumas doesn't have travel issues. He had travel issues last time. He he was scheduled to fight in There's no Saudi Arabia on the last card. There's no way they let him out of the country. Once Trump's in office, they'll let anybody <laughs> out of the fucking country. You know what I mean? They will literally – think Trump will be like, Dana, who do you need? Okay, yeah, get him in, get him out, get him in, get him out. And by uh, – sorry, I, I misspoke. When Trump's in office – they will close the borders. They will pretty much not let anybody in the country, but that'll give them a lot of uh, free bets, if you will. You know, it'll be like, hey, he'll be like, hey, I've stopped so many people at the border that whoever Dana wants across or one way or the other, I'll get them there. You know what I mean? So I think Trump will be able to help Dana get some people in and out of the country. It's like, oh, oh that's your takeaway? <laughs> so that's my uh, takeaway. So my second best bet, uh, Magomedov and uh, Oleshi, I forget how to say his last name, uh, the Polish dude. Usually, Lord. Lord. yeah, I would go Polish dude because I'm Polish and I love just Ew. my history with, huh? Ew. Never admit that again, please. Yeah, okay. Um, I got to go the pirate here, right? Family. I got to go the pirate. He can fight with one eye, unlike Bilal. Uh, he still pisses me off. But I, I got to go pirate. He's He's been unstoppable. I did not like in his last fight, however, I didn't like him grabbing the cage to prevent that takedown. That was kind of a bitch move. That pissed me off a little bit for him. He should have been deducted a point, but he wasn't. But he still won that fight. You ain't trying. What do you think about that? I don't like that. I don't. I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Uh, maybe Leon should have cheated a little bit, and I would have won 257 bucks. but whatever. You would have been a fan if you bet on him and he cheated. I would have. I probably would have. You but... would have been a fan of that move. You would have said, hey, this guy's actually yeah, trying yeah, yeah, yeah. for my on. dollar. You got a lot of fights to break down. Come on. So I got Magomedov. And um, this last fight, Corey Sanhagen and Nurgomedov, uh, you just you got to go with the Muslim Russian. You know, it's it's just him. But I something tells me to take Corey Sanhagen. Something is telling me to do it, and I might make a separate parlay with him in it. There's something about. I don't know it. what it is. I, I maybe it's it is. straight up American <laughs> freedom versus Russia. I don't know what it is, but I might just might have to go Sanhagen. But I think my my mind is telling me Umar. My heart's telling me Sanhagen. But those are my three picks, casual picks. So do with that what you will. Yeah, I mean, you got a minus 275 favorite in the co-main and a minus 300 favorite in the main event. So uh, nothing more casual, nothing more square about that. But I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, he went with a plus 180 dog. You missed that little section there. Who was that? Who was that? He went with uh, Dennis Tolulin. Oh, Tolulin. And by third round knockout, nonetheless, that's probably like one plus 1,000. I mean, so, okay, fair enough. Hey. I'm gonna put putting a sprinkle on that. I mean, I have I have some money to blow. I'll throw six six fifteen on that. Make it a, you know make it a little bet. Um, 
Adam, anything else you want to, you want to, you want to, you came, came here to discuss? You got any, uh, you got any dates? You got any, you got any plugs? You got any plugs? Right. Uh, no. Okay. Hey, that's fine. I'm so, I'm so boring. You have no idea. Well, hold on. Let me, uh, let me pick and prod here. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not the cousin here. I don't know anything about casual you Adam. Ask me any dumb questions. You get plenty of dumb questions. Uh, I'm assuming you're from the the South Jersey, like no, 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 no. Last thing we said to him was, "Don't dox yourself. Do not give away any personal information." And we're not getting there. We're not getting there. Listen, the South Jersey is a vast landscape. You know, plenty of empty towns that you you'll have a very hard time finding someone. It's hide and go see paradise. Um, the cowboy hat. The cowboy hat. The cowboy hat. Is that a prop for the show or something you wear on a regular? It's another piece of advice we gave him. I said you need to wear stuff so that you don't give away your appearance. Listen, you see, he, well, I'm, I'm, listen, you're not the one. I, I got it. I'm, I'm got directing it. the um, questions to Adam. He's from the side of the family that you know has a future with careers and stuff. <laughs> that's like that. okay. So, uh, I don't know what the cowboy hat question. I got you. I got you. Um, a lot of my buddies and I in college, we would just you know be degenerates, and one of the main things we would do is just wear cowboy hats and just do nothing but play beer die all day. So that was, that's where that came from. All right. Very cool. So you actually do wear the cowboy hat. I, I respect it. And uh, I'm glad I got to the bottom of that. Thank you. So listen, listen, thank you for joining the show, Adam. I really appreciate it. This is exactly what I hoped it would be. And, thank you. Uh, I, I, you know, don't read the comments after this, but uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be, no, they'll be positive. Man. They'll be positive. No, that's fine. Comments. That's fine. I'm, I'm all for it, man. I think there's going to be a certain percentage of the audience that says we need to see more casual Adam. I think there's going to be a certain percentage of the audience that says, what the fuck was that? But, yeah. you know, we're going to be fine. And uh, it's a new segment. It's a new it segment. Is. He's going to be on every episode. <laughs> we're working out the kinks. Okay, everybody. So everybody give Adam a round of applause. Everybody follow Adam on Instagram. Uh, and listen, we love you, Adam. Thank casual you. Casual Adam. So, is there, you know, you, you, it seems like you're running out of steam. So we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. But, uh, Make sure you at least post the episode to your social media and let everybody know Absolutely. you're comfortable. We need to get some more fans, so just get, get some people. And uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and actually I'm already watch. subscribed. Okay. And then just and leave a comment. Say, hey, guys, it's Casual Adam. Let me know what you think of my appearance. And then, you know, people will comment and reply on that, and it'll be good. Adam, good luck to you this weekend. You're in second place. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let these two guys chat shite to you. In my opinion, you're less casual than these two at this point. I mean, you're you're in the black. You're in the profit. And honestly, you're way more in the black than half of these fucking guys on YouTube. Luke, you all these I mean? winnings like, are from the Phillies. You can't even count that. Yeah, what the fuck? I won a few <laughs> UFC parlays, too. Uh, 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 but my excuse, me, one excuse, me, excuse me, excuse me. The fighting Phils. <laughs> the fighting Phils. <laughs> so I think that you can count it a little bit. Adam, oh thank you so God. much for joining the show. Everybody, thank you give a round of applause for, for Adam. You give a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, Adam. Goodbye. Boy. Okay. Kick him. Let's kick him out. Oh, Luke, I hate you. Last week when you're in the negative, you're like, Mr. Kumbaya, eh, we're a team. Like we, <laughs> <laughs> we need to work together and be positive for one another. Now you're on the offense. You fucking suck. I'm going to get a beer. <laughs> the worst. Uh, the worst for sure. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. But yeah, the Manel cop, Makayev, hated everything about it. Um, you know, you need security to separate you guys before the fight starts, and then you sit there staring at each other for five minutes. Um, and yeah, he broke his toe. He was fighting pretty well in the first round. I would have liked to see Ma uh, Muhammad Makayev get knocked out, maybe without that toe. That happens. Uh, I bet on Makayev, but nonetheless, like my dollar isn't worth my fucking wishes. Okay. And when I wish for Muhammad Makayev to get knocked out, I wish for Muhammad Makayev to get knocked out, whether that's financially sound or not. But it was the easiest pick of the night, Muhammad Makayev. It was. Well, I have one lock for this card. Stay tuned to see it. We're going to break it all down, bottom to top. Uh, we're going to finish off with the main event. We're starting at the bottom with Cedricus Dumas versus Dennis Chalulin. Ooh. So, you not know, happening. Guaranteed. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. It really is probably not going to happen. I completely agree with you. Um, you know, and if it does happen, um, it's a no bet for me. I don't have any confidence in Cedricus Dumas. You know, he known, known user, known uh, criminal, uh, allegedly, you know, um, Chalulin 
kind of a dumb fuck. Uh, only has one win in the UFC, and it was two years ago against a guy who shouldn't be in the UFC. Uh, probably the worst, the worst fighter in the division. He has a win over, so that makes him the second. But that guy's not in the UFC anymore, so he, that makes him the worst fighter in the UFC. You know, he got knocked out by Leroy Duncan, got knocked out by Rodriguez, got submitted by Jung Young Park, got submitted by Kizraev. Dennis Shalulin has nine losses. That's a woman's record, 11-9. and nine. Uh, You know, even outside of the UFC, uh, there's not a good win to speak of. Um, you know, he's got wins over 0-0, 0-0, 2-5, 5-3, 0-0. He has a win over an 0-11 guy. He has a win over an 0-0 guy. He has a win over a 7-9 and nine guy. He's got a win over – his best win is against Juscelino Ferreira, who's 11-2. and two. Uh, Other than that, his only win in the UFC is against, is against a guy who's 13-7. and seven. Um, Chalulin sucks. Cedricus Dumas also sucks. But at least Cedricus Dumas, you know, has beaten Cody Brundage, has beaten Abuzu as Itar. Uh, I'm going with Cedricus Dumas, but it's I don't like it at all, and I'm not going to be betting it. And uh, I don't think the fight happens like Alex said, so we can move on pretty quick from that one. Don't think the fight's going to happen, but I'm taking Dumas myself. Dumas is going to win. He's made a ton of improvements, especially in the grappling. Um, I'm not going to put any confidence in Dennis Tolulin. Um, I like Dumas. I believe he's coming off a loss, so that gives me more confidence than anything. Most of the times, if you're a relatively good UFC fighter, you lose a fight, you go in a little bit uh, more piss and vinegar in your next fight. I think that's what's going to happen here. And again, making improvements in the grappling. He'll keep it on the feet, be longer, rangier, and a better striker. He'll get the dub. Okay, so other than that, um, I think there's only a few more fights to break down. I'm just kidding. There's a whole bunch. Uh, <laughs> guys, fear not. The show is back. I'm in the black. We're having fun. Jai Herbert, Ronaldo Beloida. Um, listen, Ronaldo Beloida, this guy, fucking crazy dude, right? Two back-to-back losses in the UFC from Peru. Chaos Williams, split decision. Kanan Song, unanimous decision. Other than that, winless in the UFC. But I think he gets his first win here because his last fight was at 170. Jai Herbert's last fight is at 155. This fight is at what weight? 155. 155. Ooh. So I think Jai Herbert, uh, not as a favorite. No, 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 no. I'm not betting him as a favorite. Uh, he's been knocked out by Taporia, 145er. This guy's a big ass boy, fighting at 170, coming in now, uh, nine years younger. That's the big key for me. Gonna miss weight. Don't care. Miss weight. No, the I know. Peru- yeah, the Peruvian is going to get his first UFC win. He's fighting for more. He's fighting for more than Herbert is. The Black Country Banger is 36 years old. That is an age that I do not want to bet on in weight classes south of 170. Not only is this south of 170, but it's against a big guy, a stockier guy. I think a guy with more paths to victory. Give me Bedoya. Doy. Bedoya. Yeah, give me Bedoya as well. Uh, dry nice, Herbert's Alex. chin. Nice. Hey, we're and look, there you go. Like, we're, we're, we're fucking riding on him now. Jai Herbert's chinny. Um, he's he's been knocked out a few times, like Luke said, by a by a smaller guy. Now he's fighting against a guy from a weight class up. Uh, I think Bedoya is gonna run away with this one. He's younger, faster, stronger. Um, I, I, I think if Jai Herbert had any stock with the UFC, he would have been fighting this past weekend. Jai Herbert is uh, longer, rangier, snappier, uh, quicker. I, I like Bedoya. <clears throat> I think he had a, a good matchup with uh, Chaos Williams, if I'm thinking the correct fight. He had a really good showing. Ultimately couldn't get it done. I think he's having a tough go here as far as uh, his scheduling. First three UFC fights. I don't love this because I just talked about uh, Dumas coming off of a loss. We got Bedoya coming off of two losses. And I do think he's talented, so it's hard to imagine him losing three straight fights. But, you know, him going down in weight, uh, it's going to be a tough weight cut. It's that 15-pound class, uh, you know, whatever, 15-pound cut. Uh, you gotta do it in Abu Dhabi. Like these are these are tough conditions uh, against a guy who, again, I think is a better striker in what's going to be a purely striking matchup. You got uh, the Black Country Banger as a favorite here. I do like him. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the Black Country Banger. Not complete yeah, investment. No. I'm not going full Molly McCann here, but I, I like him. 
Another British dud for Daniel. Um, <laughs> well, next up, we got Victoria Dudikova versus Sam, Sam Page Hughes. Dan, what do you think about this one? I know you're a bit of a ladies' man yourself. Big time, ladies' man. I think I'm going to go with the underdog here. I'm going to learn my lesson and not go full-blown on a ladies' favorite. And I actually stylistically like this one as far as uh, Sam Hughes is concerned. Plus 150, last I checked. Um, you know, it's one of those fights where it's like, okay, if you don't get the takedown, then what happens? I see Sam Hughes being super scrappy, uh, digging in those underhooks, not getting taken down, circling out, and just throwing a shit ton of volume and uh, getting a decision win, win here against Dudakova. You know, I know she's a big, strong girl, a uh, pretty impressive grappler, but I think Sam Hughes got more UFC experience. You know, uh, what's the uh, the name of that Texas gym that she's at? Uh, Fortis? Yes, Fortis MMA. She's got that maniac coach who's going to be screaming at her to, you know, keep Safe this side. up. Safe Sayud, yep, yep, yep. I've been drinking, folks. Uh, she's going to stay up on her feet. She's going to throw a shit ton of volume, and she's going to get that dub via judge's decision at plus 150. One of four dogs on this card, maybe three. I'm going to take Dude Kova. Um, dude Akova. I mean, what isn't there to love about her? She's seven years younger. She's got a four-inch reach advantage. Um you know, Sam Page has good wrestling. I will admit that. But I think Dudikova has more ways to win. I think she's going to have the snappier punches out there. And I think in the grappling exchanges, she's probably going to get the better of Sam Page. I'm going with Victoria Dudikova. Not really going to have much on this, obviously. It's a ladies' fight. We don't put too much money on no ladies. Uh, but I'm going with Dudikova, the favorite. Yeah, Dudikova coming off, I believe, the Contender Series, right? Yeah, and that fight with Maria Silva, she was undefeated 8-0. And, and good fight, close fight, I remember watching it. Um, I'm going with Dudikova. Sam Page, obviously, is a is a party upsetter. She upsets the party all the time. You know, I, I, it's a perfect fight for Sam Page to come in here and get a grimy little win. But I think that Russia being a little bit closer to, where's this fight taking place? Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Abu Dhabi. So, you know. I think that uh, that Dudikova gets the win. I'm not going to overthink this. I'm not going to look for Sam Page. I'm not beating a a lady fighter with a uh, another lady fighter who's just not good. You know what I mean? Like Sam Page is, she's grimy. She's tough. She's with Fortis, like you said, Dan. But she lost to Yasmin Uruguay. She lost to Priya Rodriguez. She lost. She's got some good wins. You know, Silly Yunus, good. Elise Reed, not good. Jacqueline Morum, who knows who that Fine. is. Um, to me, it's like if you can lose to Lo Loma Lupumi, who's pretty much like a smaller Victoria Dudikova, you're going to lose Victoria D Dudikova. Now, the only thing is, the golden rule with women's betting for me is you take the uglier fighter. Harder life, less options, a um, lot of reasons, right? I, I go with Dudikova here just because Russian pretty girls, still hard life. Still very hard life. So uh, I'm going with Dudikova. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, she looks pretty in her topology picture. But, guys, she's a New York 6. You know what I mean? She's an LA 4. You know what I mean? She's 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 hot for, you know, where we're from. Yeah, she, she's at 10 where I'm from. She's a fucking – I'm from – you heard uh, – what's her name? Uh, Amber Rose. Girls from Philadelphia, ugly. I'm from the Philadelphia region. Dan's from the Philadelphia region. She's like – people – I think her exact words were, people where I'm from aren't traditionally attractive, right? So, look, I know this is sounding chauvinistic. I'm playing a character. You know what I mean? I'm playing a little bit of a character today. So, with that said, I will... Uh... God, man, woman, dog. Sorry, the Bogagi beef I ate earlier is coming up. Keep fucking burping. Um, I'm going with Dudikova. I like her. I'm, I have a crush on her. Dudikova, I think you're a 10. I'm just saying, like, if you're going by LA or New York standards, you know what I mean? You're a 6, 6.5. Solid out. Yeah. Solid 7.5. But um I like to shop at the duty free shop. Name that show. Put it in the comments. Don't Google it. <laughs> All right. Next we got Garam Kutalakedze versus Jordan the Bear. Volsenic. The epidemic. And it's like Jordan. 
a pandemic is greater than an epidemic. But if you were the pandemic, you know, we would just be like, oh, you're fake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can say that now. We can say that. We used to not be able to say that on YouTube. They would, they would fucking send a fucking SWAT team to our house. Oh, right. but, oh, right. but we can say that now. Um, pandemic was fake. It was a scamdemic. If you got the vaccine, all right, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Um, not financial advice, not medical advice. We're just joking. Uh, we're just joking. So I'm going with uh, the epidemic. I don't like Garam. I think he's a bit of a fraud. Um, you know, his, his best claim to fame is that he trains with Hamzat Shemaev. Hamzat Shemaev is a guy who falls victim to what? Illness. A lot. Um, Hamzat Shemaev is his, his, he, he is 0 and 3 um, against the cold, against getting colds, against getting sick, no immune system. And what weakens your immune system? What weakens your immune system? When you are doing. Injected in, in, in his asshole. He's, he's uh, you know, injected in his asshole. He and, and what is it that you're doing? You know, and like I said with Arnold, it's like you look, some of these guys look like they're doing stepped on gear. You know what I mean? Gear, like, like, like they're getting it from a back alley guy. You know what I mean? He's putting a little fetty in there. He's putting a little fentanyl in there. And that's why you get sick. So I don't know. I'm just joking. But at the end of the day, fuck Hamzat. You had my heart. Crushed it into pieces so many times. Couldn't finish Usman. Couldn't finish Gilbert Burns. You know who did better against Gilbert Burns? Bilal Muhammad. You know who did better against Kamar Usman? Bilal Muhammad. So I'm going with the other guy. I don't even know his name. I never saw him fight. Don't even care. I like his neck tats. I like his body tats. But if you know me, you know that tattoos are detrimental to your health. You should never get tattoos. Um, but I like the plus 200 underdog to make a UFC splash. Big time. Uh, big time. Uh, upset the apple cart fight here. Jordan Volchenik. Volchenik. The pandemic, um, missed weight in his last fight, allegedly. I'm going with I'm going with him. Word up. I'm going with Garam. I'm going to take a piss. I'm gonna fill up my water. You're gonna I'll take be a piss. You're gonna take a piss? You're gonna take a piss out of the pandemic? The epidemic? Oh, I might I take the piss. I me, I like to take the piss all the time, I I take the piss too. I take the piss too. <laughs> Different way though. In a different way, you know what I'm saying? God, I... These are all the tattoos are bad for you. This guy is on death's door. I mean, you see his arm. He's got it's just all black. He just had a guy color it in like it's a coloring book. So I'm gonna go off of that theory, and I'm gonna go against Luke. I'm gonna go with Guram. Uh, you know, he's coming off of two straight losses here, so we're gonna go off the theory that really good fighters. Don't lose three straight fights. Uh, so I think he's a level above Bedoya. He's above that. Um, last loss to Elvis Brenner. He was beating the living shit out of him until round three. He, he might have had a, a you know a gas tank issue, whatever. I'm sure he's you know cleaned that up a bit. Um, previous loss to Demir Ismagulov. Split decision loss against a guy who was a damn good fighter. I think some people thought he won that fight. And then the uh, his first UFC fight here, we got a win over uh, Matus Gamra, who is very close to fighting for a title here at 155, the best division in the sport. So um, all that going up against a UFC newcomer on short notice. Bit of a layup here for Mr. Gamra at minus 250. I'm going to ride with my boy, ride with the Georgians. So if you guys want to know where I'm getting all this information about tattoos, you got to take a look at this. Do you see this, Dan? Immune cells. Yes. So it says your tattoo is inside your immune system. Literally. Um, you want to go watch this video. It's got 13 million views. I'm not breaking any news here, but this video right here taught me everything I needed to know about tattoos. Basically it says like bad news, like bad news bears, like to get tattoos really bad. Um, and you know, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, not going to affect his fighting performance, but when he's older, um, he's not going to like, what what he did to his body did you see that yeah okay yeah well i didn't hit stop share and all of a sudden it stopped sharing but anyway don't get tattoos um you know 
keep the clean cut look that never goes out of style um but tattoos they 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 wreck your immune system i also wanted to share this while alex is gone so i i copped a uh japanese mu psa grade 10 with my winnings from last week check this out japanese mu one of my favorite pokemon um just want i had that sitting here i just felt like i should share it uh you know invest in tangible assets guys forget nfts okay um Get yourself some Pokemon cards, you know. As a young lad, uh, did you see the Mew movie in theaters? I saw it in theaters, of course. I got the ancient Mew, you know, at the theater. Um, and and I, actually, my daughter loves Pokemon. And we watch Pokemon. And, dude, so much better to watch it as an adult. There's so much, like, hidden jokes and hidden, like, you know, lessons and stuff that they give, like, during these shows. And, like, I, it, it, it literally warms my fucking heart. Pokemon was probably, like, the first show that I like found and chose to like, you know what I mean? As a kid. And like, when you rewatch these episodes, they're just as good now. Like original series Pokemon, you know? So many, it literally like I'm watching it and like I'm watching it, my daughter's watching it and I'm just like, wow. Like so many lessons, so much motivation, you know, for, for gamblers like us, gotta bet on yourself. Ash Ketchum, he bet on himself. Um, you know, he wants to be the very best. Like no one ever was, you know, to catch them is my real test to train them is my cause. Like you got to watch Pokemon get back into the classics guys. Don't be watching any, anything new. You know, Alex is out here. He's watching sketch. He's watching Spoobly doo Skibbity Ohio. None of that. Nah, get back to the basics, you know, Pokemon, Scooby-Doo, the Smurfs. That's what you gotta be watching. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I forget where we we're going with this, but trophy certified Jordan, the epidemic. Uh, no, sorry. No. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> Luki certified, Jordan uh, Volchenchnik. Um, and honestly, he probably will lose because at the end of the day, he's from London, England, and Garam can wrestle. He is Georgian, and he does need to win. He's on a two-fight losing streak. So Garam probably will win. I won't be betting Garam. I'm taking a stab at the underdog. It is what it is. Um, next fight, Shamel Gazeev versus Dantel Mays. Whenever I see Shamel Gazeev's name, I don't know why. I just imagine Cody Saftik. And he's going, Chamel Gazeev? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't know why. Maybe he never said that. <laughs> you lost to Chamel Gazeev? <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul Shaughnessy comes in. To be fair. To uh, be fair. Gazeev. You know. But anyway, yeah. I'm going with Good guys on these here. You know, underdog pick number two, I guess, for me. Lord Kong, right? Plus 220 underdog, but he just comes off a two-month-ago victory against uh, Kyle Machado. Meanwhile, homeboy Gazeev got knocked the fuck out four months ago. So, yeah, they want him to win. You know, he barely got it done against the toilet Budai. Um, I'm going with Dontel Mates. I think he's going to surprise some people. Jackson Wink, man, never forget. He's got a reach advantage, a height advantage. He's younger. He's bigger. A um, lot of things to like about Lord, Lord Kong going into this fight. I think he's got a lot to prove. I think, you know, he's a win-one, lose-one type of fighter. He did just win one, so he probably will lose one, but I don't know. I think objects in motion stay in motion sometimes, and I think Gazeev is not a 12 and not a, you know, not, not, not a who we thought he was coming in. He's not even Russian. He's from Bahrain. I don't know where that is. I know where Albuquerque is, though, and I know uh, that Lord Kong has uh, the ability to get the win here. So I'm going with Lord Kong, Dante Mays. Give me uh, Gazayev on this one. There's just going to be something in the air, something in this uh, Abu Dhabi air that that just gets gets all of the boys going. And I think Shamil is going to be one of them. I am actually with Luke on this. I like Maze Gazayev. Gazayev. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. You ain't even got to tell him. Don't tell him. Don't. He should come out to that song. What's that song? No idea. Don't Never heard it in my life. You know I'm from Chicago. <laughs> Don't tell him, I would imagine. I fuck around, Bobby Brown with it. Chris Brown? Is that the song? What song is it? I think I it might be up. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He was a bullfrog. Um, but Dante Mays. Good friend of mine, too. Hey, there it's we Jeremiah. go. It's Jeremiah. Uh, it's poem by Jeremiah. I think Mays gets it done. Gaziev, he was gassing out hardcore uh, in his last fight against uh, Rosa Truck. I think Mays is one of these guys who. You know, as a heavyweight, he doesn't throw the most volume in the world, but he's like more athletic than most heavyweights. I feel like he's got to get a better gas tank than most of these guys, especially Gaziev. So, uh, in a fight with two 
big fat dudes. I like uh, I like Mays to be more athletic, put up more more strikes, and have a better gas tank in round three. And so I think he puts it on him in uh, the second half of round two going forward and against the win. Taking the Norm McDonald approach. I love it, Dan. Okay, so moving on. Um, Muhammad Yaya versus Caio Fernandez. What do you think about this one, Alex? I don't think much of anything at this point. Um, <clears throat> defeated. I love Trevor Peak, but, you know, he's not the most well-rounded guy. I'm going to go with Caio Fer- Fernandez here, uh, you know. I rate Mark DeCase a little higher than Trevor Peak. Uh, yeah. D one DeCase, you know, you get a split decision against him. I I definitely score that a little higher than losing to Trevor Peak in a decision. You don't really see Trevor Peak winning too many decisions. Um, so I'm going with Muhammad Yah. No, not Muhammad Yah. Yeah, pardon me, Fernandez. Yeah, I'll double up on that. I'll go with Fernandez as well. He's the minus three forty favorite. Um, not too crazy about this fight in general, but I like what you're saying about the Mark Duquesne fight. Your first UFC fight, you go up against Duquesne, a proven vet. You take that all the way to a split decision. Uh, I think we're going to see a better version of him in this next fight, as we often do in the second fight of UFC fighters. And uh, I think he's going to finally get that elusive W. Up until this very moment, I thought Caillou Fernandez was fighting Honey Yaya. Mm-mm. Yeah, nah. <laughs> so I was going to pick him when I thought he was fighting Honey Yaya, but he's fighting Muhammad Yaya, who has not won in the UFC yet, but needs to win. Is fighting in the UAE. He's from the UAE or whatever. So I'm going to go with Yaya. You know what I mean? I just think um, hometown cooking, hometown advantage. Um, Caillou Fernandez, too green, you know, only 10 fights into his career, winless in the UFC. Definitely has something to prove, but Muhammad Yaya has more to prove. Trevor Peak, I think, is more formidable than Mark Jacase with seven losses. Trevor Peak, you know, one loss and fights like a fucking banshee. Uh, you know, a lot to deal with on a short. I think it was a short notice fight too. I'm gonna look into this real quick for you guys. But you know, um, if you go to Muhammad uh, Islam Makachev versus Volkanovski too, then you'll see that Trevor Peak was originally okay. No, it wasn't short notice at all. It wasn't short notice at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, big test. Kind of a big uh, question mark kind of fight. All things. I equal. thought the Fernandez DeCase fight was short notice too, and it wasn't. I think yeah, it's like I know all I need to know about about um, Mark DeCase. I don't know all I need to know about Trevor Peak, and I I think that Muhammad Yaya, the UAE warrior, back against the wall, got to get a win here. Give me Muhammad Yaya as a big underdog. I might swap him out if I see that I have a ton of underdogs picked. I might swap him out. You know, I could see me swapping out Jordan Volchenschnik. I could see me um, swapping out Dontel Mays even. Um, but one of these dogs is going to come up. And, uh, you know, so far I got Bedoya as a dog. I got Volchenschnik as a dog. I got Mays as a dog. I got Muhammad Yaya as a dog. So I might need to do some adjustment. But I think this is going to be a dog-heavy card. Um, a lot of favorites. A lot of big favorites won last week. I think the only fav- favorites that lost were Parsons. Parsons, Edwards. I'll do some more research, but um, I'll go back and watch the tape on who who the dog. Okay so, okay, so Meatball Molly lost, but okay, okay. So actually, there were a lot of dogs last week too. I mean, you had you had uh, Bruno Brazil, Adley, Bruno Brazil, Lee, uh, Muhammad Bilal. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I think of his last name? So I said his last name, Bilal Muhammad, um, RoboCop. Bruno Brazil, Jake Hadley, and o- Odin, Odin Elliott. So five out of, you know, nine favorites won last week. But a lot of those favorites, big, heavy favorites, right? Chalky favorites. You got to look at it like a market, right? A bubble, you know. It's it, it's at, The more favorites win, that bubble is inflating. It's got to burst sometime. It has to fucking burst sometime or, or, else, or else what? Or else what? There's no gambling market at all, right? It has you have to look at it as a market because that's how Vegas looked at it, right? It's a leverage, it's market, it's it's stocks, it's it's the housing crisis, it's all those things, right? So I'm going with uh, who did I say? What, what are we even talking about? I blacked out for a second. Muhammad, my, yeah, yeah, is that uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going with yeah, yeah. I'm going with yeah, yeah. Okay. 
You guys pick Fernandez. Oh, I'm picking Patty Yaya. was a dog last weekend. That's six. What'd you say? Said that Patty was a dog as well. That's six dogs on the whole Kind of. He was all he was less favorite than Bobby Green. King Green. Who does it pick him? What was my team? another lad king. king. Yeah, can you imagine calling another lad king? Your parents named you Bobby, mate. Robert. No, mate. You were the one talking about me. <laughs> I, I didn't play this for Molly. Hold on. You did. Oh, not, not that one. Not that one. I, I didn't play this. <laughs> There's a thunderstorm going on. It was it was here a little bit ago. It blew its way to Dan. He's about an hour south of me. So, um, okay. <laughs> no, we got to play this for Molly real quick. Hey, Molly, this one's for you. Look at him. Absolute disgrace. Why would I want to be from Liverpool? It's a shithole. Why would I want to be from Liverpool? It's a shithole. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll take it away. Alonzo Minifield, Azamat, Mirza Khanoff. Um, 36 year old versus the 35 year old in the light heavyweight division. Um, Menafield, six foot tall, four inch reach advantage, four to MMA, coming off a knockout loss only two months ago to Carlos Olberg. I don't like that, right? Uh, meanwhile, Azmat Mirzakhanov coming off a pretty impressive victory against a one Dustin Jacoby. Dustin Jacoby. I'm sorry, Dustin Jacoby. Um, you know, Menafield's a plus 160 dog. You but that was more than a year ago. That was in April of 2023. April Ooh, 15th. What? So here's where we... So actually, this is good for the audience. So audience, do we go with somebody who did get a good win a year ago? Or do we get a guy who's been active but got knocked out two months ago? What, what and he couldn't about? fight... He couldn't fight on uh, in December of last year because he had m a pneumonia. Pneumonia? Pneumonia. Again, no. These guys. Why are they? Why is their immune system so shitty? You know, he withdrew. I mean? Also, Eastern European black guys. You know what I mean? I can't imagine Russia is pumping them full of vaccines. So what? What is it that's wrecking their immune system? Not not medical advice. Dan, who do you got? Uh, Alonzo sure. Metafield or Azamat Mirzakhanov? Oh, Mirzakhanov sorry, I did. I did. Uh... Has it bought in over a year? Menafield got knocked out two months ago. Very interesting matchmaking they're doing here. It's like, what do you favor? Do you favor the activity, but getting but getting knocked out, returning way too quick, or do you favor, you know, not having? Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to go with activity. I'm going to go with uh, my boy Merzikhanov. Uh This is really a more of a fade on Menafield. I know he's made some minor improvements over the years. Got a couple uh, Fortis MMA guys on this card, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. That being said, I like uh, Mirzakhanov here. He's had a nice, steady diet of UFC talent. You go from Tafan and Jukwi to Devin Clark, and then Dustin Jacoby. Like that's that's a nice little rise, right? Dustin Jacoby's a, a tough nut to crack. Uh, I think a lot harder than Alonzo Menafield. Uh, I think Asma. Yeah, I'm gonna say he's he gets the KO. He gets the KO. I think it's going to be a much, much easier task than his his last opponent there. So I'll take the favorite at home. I'm going to go with Alonzo Menafield. Uh, I'm going to do this begrudgingly. I feel like Ozma Merzikhanov has lost 40 minutes in the octagon of his fights and has managed to win like the Tafan and Chuck we fight. Like he was losing that entire fight, got a flying knee, knocked the guy out. I'm pretty sure when he fought Devin Clark, he was losing that whole fight and then knocked him out. Um, no. And if, if my, if memory serves me correct, Dustin Jacoby was winning most of those rounds and was getting rocked by him. Like at the end of the round, just like he did against Alonzo Menafield and ended up losing that fight. Dustin um, Jacoby. I think that Alonzo Menafield will get knocked out in the third round, but is going to win a lot of this fight. <laughs> so let me let me uh, give you a little bit of pushback there, specifically on the Devin Clark fight. You said you said Devin Clark was winning. 
I'm looking at the stats here. Osmot landed 79 strikes to Devin Clark's 14, and Osmot had a knockdown in that, and he knocked him out eventually in the last round. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dustin Jacoby, that was kind of split. Like they both had the same amount of strikes. Osmot had three more and a knockdown. They both had a takedown each. So I don't know. The Defund and Chuck we fight, he was losing the entire thing. Yes, that that'll give you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one vividly. I, I'm not sure about the Devin Clark one. I'll, I'll hand that to you. But the Dustin Jacoby fight, thought it was very close. Um, I'm going with Alonzo Menafield. I think that. He's got a pretty diverse skill set. He's really big, really athletic. Um, you saw what he did against Dustin Jacoby, where, you know, even though he was losing a lot of the fight, he would win every round because he would floor him right at the perfect time. So I think that he's going to have the power advantage against uh, Osmat Mirzakhanov. I feel like Osmat Mirzakhanov gets really, really – lucky late in fights and takes rounds off uh and i, I think he starts slow i think alonzo menafield is going to be there i think he's going to be there late in the fight there's another fortis mma guy i'm going with alonzo menafield uh but i have a feeling he's going to get knocked out in the third round i i just have a feeling uh that he's going to win both of the first two rounds be winning the third round and then get knocked out could could happen but I got to go with the guy who I know is going to win more minutes. All right. I hear you. Luke already gave his take on this fight. I don't I don't think so, but we can go to the next one. And have All right. Well, fuck him. Let's go to the next fight. We got Joel Alvarez versus Elvis Brenner, a barn oh, burner of a fight if I've ever heard of one. Alex, you have a hot take on this? No, this is uh, probably the toughest fight on the card to pick. Love both of these guys. Uh, but, you know... You're losing to Demir, uh, Demir Ismagulov. I I actually respect Demir Ismagulov. That's the blinker, right? Yes. Who's losing to Demir Ismagulov? Joel Alvarez did. I. That's a pretty good loss. And then the other ones are for UFC. No, in the UFC. I'm pretty sure. I'm looking at his thing right now. Who? Joel Alvarez. Yeah. Yeah, he lost to Demir Ismagulov, UFC, yes. Oh, I see that here. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah but, you know, I, I like Joel Alvarez. Um, I feel like he's kind of a guy who relies on the finish in the first round a little too much. Um, I feel like Elvis Brenner's a durable guy. Uh, he's – you know, good enough at jujitsu to make sure Joe Alvarez doesn't do anything tricky. He's he's very slick on the ground. Uh, I'm going with Elvis Brenner. I just think he's going to be durable enough. He's heartier. Joe Alvarez is thinner, taller. Uh, that makes him dangerous. But I think that Elvis Brenner is going to work the body and then go up top and knock him out. I don't think I gave my pick for the last fight. You didn't. I'm actually going for. I'm going for Menafield. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't love it, but I'm going to go with Menafield. I just kind of think he's going to win. I think he's going to get knocked out in the third round after winning the whole fight. Nah, Merzikonov doesn't have that kind of st- uh, power. It's either going to be the first round or Menafield. You saw what he did to, uh, to, to Fon and Chuck, we did. Maybe. It's a stay away fight for me. Um, and the next one I'm agreeing with you as well, Elvis Brenner. I think Joe Alvarez... Is good. I think he's great. I like, I like the youth. Um, I like the kind of ability, I think, to go for the takedown if need be. And I think that Alvarez will accept bottom position. Um, I think Mikkel Orobai is a really good fighter that nobody wants to fight. And Brenner uh, took that fight and took him all the way to a decision. Knocked out Kanan Kurchuski, knocked out Garam. Took Zubaira to a split decision. I'm going with Elvis Brenner as well. Joel Alvarez, you look too much like Andrew Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> and we hate Andrew Schultz. Um, and, you know, a lot of guys in the Discord, like even Adam, right? Adam's like, you guys watch Rogan. You guys watch Draco. It's like, Adam, a lot of these people, they're still operating off information we gave them 10 years ago. You know what I mean? 
They're operating off information we gave them 10 years ago. There's only one guy we support right now. And I was hoping he would go live tonight. But here we, here we are, my favorite show. If you know, you know. So we don't support Andrew Schultz. We don't support Tony Henschcliffe. We don't support Joe Rogan. We don't support any of these guys. And we definitely don't support John Anik. Fuck John Anik. John Anik is the biggest bitch of all time. He literally, like, he forgets all the time, like, you're play-by-play. We don't fucking want your opinion, Jack. We don't want anything except this round sponsored by Bud Light, Modelo. Like, that's all we need from you. Tell us what round. He's pretty much, John Anik is equivalent to a ring card girl. Tell us what round it is. Tell us when the fight is starting. Tell us who the sponsors are. Wave, blow the kiss, shut the fuck up. My girlfriend came home drunk from the Phillies game, saw John Anik on the screen for two seconds, said, ugh, I hate that thumb. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a, a a single small tiny little nutsack. <laughs> Very nutsack like that. No um, woman wants to play with. All right, I'm gonna triple P certify Elvis. You know, you know why he's a twin? Because he was so pathetic. God had to say, let's just make two of them to fucking make up the difference between. If, we, if, if there was just that, one also one, makes a full ball sack. Right. Exactly. <laughs> John Anik. John Anik, you're a half nut. <laughs> your brother's the other half you know what i mean you guys you guys together make one real human being you know and it's like yeah Yikes. Like, god god put john, he made one john addict he said i can't do this to this poor woman i'm just gonna give her two of these that way it'll make 75 percent of a man you know because i can't give her a half man i'll i'll, I'll give her all right i'll give her i'll give her a 75 percent listen john. we know we know johnny boy hates the the online commentary and negativity so let's not be too rough uh, he might quit his, he might quit his job Luke. Exactly. He might make him happy quit. to say it right to your fucking face if you fucking <laughs> ever come out of your hole you little fucking mole <laughs> <laughs> where's hunter campbell i'm gonna call fucking hunter campbell and i'll tell him to fire call him. hunter campbell but you got you got to tell me you got to fire john anik that's got to be the message uh i'm gonna well, triple to certify it. elvis very able to record somebody without their consent you were um, all about it last week. I know, but he's in. If we were in Vegas and he was in Vegas, it'd be fine. But I'm not in a. I'm in a two part. We're in Vegas. <laughs> we're in Vegas. <sighs> That's not, not what my. I need to get go. I need to get uh, what's the VPN thing? I gotta get Gopher. What's it called? Oh, um, Tunnel Bear. I gotta get Tunnel Bear if I want to fucking uh, spoof my VPN, my my IP address. You know, got me a VPN. All right. All right, let's um, move it on. We're triple P certified on Elvis Brenner. Hell yeah. Unity, plus 100 dog. Bet it all. Uh, Dern versus Godinez. It's obvious for me. Is it obvious for you guys? Yeah. All right, let's say it on three. One, two, three. Luke. Godinez. <laughs> Alex, what do you think? Break the tie. You're muted. I said Godinez. Triple B certified Godinez. Uh, you got one girl who, you know, comes out there, fights her heart out, took Verna Jenneroba to a split decision, something that made a Lemash couldn't do. Um, Tabitha Ricci, also good. Elise Reed sucks. She got her out of there. Emily Ducate, good. Beat her. Cynthia Calvillo, split decision. Obviously, she's good. Um, <laughs> my, my perfect Harley Queen. I'm going with, uh, obviously, you know, Lupi Godinez beat. Verna Jandrova, three months ago, well, took her to a decision. Mackenzie Lemos lost to Amanda. Mackenzie Duran lost to Amanda Lemos. Listen, it's loopy, it's loopy, it's loopy. Loopy, 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 loo. Mackenzie Dern, she doesn't even want to win. If she wins, she's going to give more money to her fucking little bitch-ass ex-husband. Which, that that guy, biggest scam artist in the world, never fucking marry a surfer. <laughs> never marry a surfer, girls. Because they're all they are, these, these surfers, they're smoking the heifer. <laughs> They're riding the waves, and all they want is to uh, to do you dirty. So I hate her ex-husband, um, but also I love him a little bit. You know, definitely a hero for men's rights. He's an MRA activist taking that money. He's like uh, Tom Arnold. <laughs> He's like, he, Tom, shout, out, shout out to him and Tom Arnold, the only two men. And, uh, the, the director, the director, uh, the gentleman. What's that guy's name? The director, he stole all of like uh, Madonna's money or something. Uh, Harvey Weinstein? No, not Harvey Weinstein. Close He's an me. English guy. I think so. Did he direct the, the movie? Is he been on Joe Rogan's podcast? 
I don't know, man. Yeah. You're talking about the, the gentleman, the movie? Yes. Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Yeah, Guy Ritchie. Ritchie. Guy Ritchie, yes. He also took a lot of money from a woman, I believe, allegedly, in a Dude. divorce. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty bitch-ass move, to be honest with you. But not... Now that I think about it, I'm not letting her get... I mean, like... Like, now that I think about it, it's like... We got rappers wearing dresses. <laughs> I heard two rappers backstage talk about which one was the first to wear a dress. <laughs> All right. If you know, you know. We're going with Loopy Loop. And that brings us to the four really entertaining fights of the night. The four fights that no matter which side you're on, you're kind of, I think, seeing some value, right? I mean, these are close fights with big disparities in the odds. Um so we move on. We move on. Uh, Tony Ferguson versus Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa, the biggest fucking loser, the biggest um, <laughs> bitch ass Anthony Smith wannabe. Him and Anthony Smith making a case for the biggest behind the desk blowjob in the fucking division, in the fucking sport. Um, you know, Michael Chiesa winning no fans, never had a knockout in his fucking life. Um, absolute bitch ass. Nobody taps more and then comes out to fucking stranglehold <laughs> and you know what tony's really good at the dars which is the last two times this man went to make as floyd mayweather told connor tap out make him tap out michael chiesa such a bitch choke artist fucking bitch michael chiesa listen you do have to worry about me you do have to worry about my opinion you do have to take into account what i have to say nobody has been more of an evangelist for the ufc than me nobody has been since day fucking one, since I was in the sixth grade, I was telling my friends, hey, come over to my house. Watch the UFC pay-per-view. I'll buy it. Watch the UFC pay-per-view. Nobody has evangelized more from when it was cringe to be a fan of the UFC, from when wearing tap out and wearing affliction was not cool. I was wearing affliction shirts. I was buying Anderson Silva's walkout shirts. I was out here evangelizing. Silver star. I, silver star, baby. I was in fucking college, right, in cabs on my way to parties watching the fights on my fucking Samsung fucking I was in college literally taking girls remotes in their apartments and buying the fucking fights on their TV <laughs> without their knowledge like I was doing this since fucking day one you were submitted by Anthony Pettis he's a kickboxer you were submitted by Vince Lu Vincente Luque before he found God you were submitted by Kevin Holland you're scared you're a bitch. You're a coward. Go back to Alaska where nobody fucking ever needs to see you again. Get your ugly ass face and your stupid ass tattoos off my screen. You and Anthony Smith, the two biggest desk jockeys, the two biggest fucking lame tattoo having idiots. Um, listen, I've had several drinks tonight. Don't even fucking say, oh, he didn't know what he was going to say next. I know what I'm going to say and I hate you. It's, I'm seething mad at you, Michael Chiesa. I don't like you at all. And that's why I'm picking Tony Ferguson. I hate Michael Chiesa. He, the real play in this fight is over. It's, it's the over. Because Chiesa, he ain't finishing, no Tony Ferguson. Chiesa, he will be on probably, allegedly, in my humble opinion, without any evidence, he will be on the big three. He will be on the big three. He's, he's uh, you know, ejected his ass. So um, and, you know, Tony will not be. But Tony looked really good against Chandler. Tony looked really good against Patty. If Patty's as good as everybody says he is, then Tony's fucking great. Tony won rounds off Patty. You know what I mean? And uh, Kiesa is a coward. I hate Kiesa. I wish that I never had to see him again. I don't know why they put the most insufferable fighters on this desk. From Anthony Smith to Michael Kiesa, they both need to fucking dig a hole, jump in it, and then just wait. You know what I mean? Wait for somebody to kick dirt over it. Um I hate Kiesa. I'm picking Tony. The value's there. Tony put up the longest win streak. The only thing more impressive is what he's doing now, putting up the longest losing streak. He's going <laughs> to probably beat BJ Penn's record. That'd be the one good thing he could do for me, but not not on Michael Kiesa. No, 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 no. This is Tony Ferguson getting one more win. This is Tony Ferguson. He's going to – because what does Michael Kiesa do? Get scared. He was scared to death against Mike Kevin Holland. Scared to fucking death. And Kevin Holland even said it. He goes, this guy gets scared, puts himself in bad positions. I think he's going to have a little bit too much muscle, a little bit too much roid rage for Tony. 
So that's why he will probably end up winning. But I'm picking Tony Ferguson. Damn, I look good, dude. I look fucking good. Like when I look at myself in the in the thing, I'm like, dude, you haven't even. I'm like, bro, you haven't even been working out, and you look this good. Imagine what happens when I get on the gear. Imagine what happens when I go see an endocrinologist and say, you know, I'll, I'll fucking run 12 miles. Go see the endocrinologist. Be like, have have my girl kick me in the ball seven times. Like, oh, I need any, and they'll be like, oh yeah, you need testosterone, and then I'll be fucking looking like, looking like, uh, uh what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Polaris. I'll be looking like Husamar Polaris up in this bitch. I said, I ain't going for legs. I'm going for your soul. So don't don't ever 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 say something to me, Michael. Because I guess no one's afraid of you. At least of all me. I'll come to your gym. Well, I'll sign the waiver. We'll go five fucking rounds, okay? <laughs> I will fucking spar Michael Chiesa. I'm about to take a little ride down to Joe Selecki's gym. Fucking tell everybody there what's what. Then I'm going to go to fucking Washington and fucking kick Michael Chiesa in the fucking nuts once or twice, legally under the unified rules after I sign the waiver. I'm coming to your dojo. I'm storming your dojo. I'm coming to your fucking neck of the woods. You're a little bitch. Spend your time hunting. Spend your time... He... Michael Chiesa probably baits his deer. You know what I mean? He probably fucking throws apples all over and baits them. He's like, ooh. You're a coward. You're a pussy ass bitch. Respond to this. I dare you. And, and this asshole. I'm going with Tony Ferguson. Uh, you know, there's something in Chiesa that looks for a door out, and there's something in Tony that says the opposite. And uh, you got to go with Tony on this one. Michael Chiesa falls victim to the Darce a lot, and Tony Ferguson is a Darce expert. Got to go with Tony Ferguson. Dan. Oh, uh, is this He's a company, company man? Oh, I'm a company 70. man. I'm a company That's man. 70? But they both have fought at 155. And yeah. Is this uh, T Ferg's first bout at 70? He fought Diaz at 70. Okay. I'm going to try to think he even won the Ferguson. ultimate fighter. I'm doing at 170. it. Plus 440. Tony Ferguson's going to get it done. Uh, listen, if this thing is on the mat, that's Tony Ferguson's land, like you guys have already alluded to. Tony Ferguson with the Dars, his secret weapon, and the secret kryptonite, not so secret, of Michael Chiesa. I think he can get it done there. I think if it stays on the feet, he will be fucking piecing him up, jabbing his ass, moving around, having that good movement. I like Tony Fer. I'm not even like trying to do a bit or like trying to unify us and do a triple P certification. I actually like Tony Ferguson to get the win here. Um, yeah. Dogger pass, like, all the way. All the way, dogger pass. Hey, Kiesa, how's it feel to be literally worse than Jake Paul? It's more admirable doing – it's more admirable doing what Jake Paul's doing than doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well you said. have seven fucking losses. Let's see. Who is my Kiesa lost to? Let's see. He lost to – Vincente Luque, Sean Brady, Kevin Holland, Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, Joe Lozon, George Masvidal. Um, George Masvidal lost to Jake Paul, just to let you know. So how the fuck are you going to beat Tony Ferguson? I want to see I want to see Kiesa box Jake Paul. I swear to God. Jake Paul would knock your fucking block off, Kiesa. Jake Paul would knock you the fuck <laughs> out. I'd love to in see Aaron Anthony Uncle, Smith for Jake in Paul. MMA and in boxing. He would knock you out under any rule set. Jake Paul, shout out to Jake fucking Paul. You're the fucking man. But you know what? If we said Jake Paul, you want to fight Michael Kiesa? You know what he would say? You know what he would say? I know what he would say. I've heard him say it before. I know exactly what he would say. He would say, fuck, I can't find it. God damn it. Let me say it. You know what Jake Paul would say? <laughs> if they said the name Michael Kiesa to him, he would say, I honestly don't even know who those people are. He wouldn't know if you were one person, two person, three person. He wouldn't know who the fuck you are because you're a nobody. You're Karen Bryant. Karen Bryant is better <laughs> than you. Alex is a fan of her clip ass. This, clip this and send this to my kids. <laughs> What'd you say? She's got a fatter ass? Is that what you just said? No, I said Alex is a fan oh. of that ass. <laughs> I didn't realize her figure until recently. Um, yeah. I'm an admirer. Silent admirer. Got that hourglass ass. Okay, enough. <laughs> Aaron, I'm sorry, Karen. Karen, I'm sorry. 
All right. Um, the next fight is my lock. What? Card. So Hanato Moicano, not Hanato Moicano. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Hanach Laranja can can de- degrade her, but we can't. We're not, there's no degrading going on. What, where's the degradation coming from? There's no certainly not me. There's no degrading. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's a married woman. Okay. Um. Uh. Listen. I'm going with this next fight. Is my lock of the card. Absolute fucking lock of the card. Oh, uh, this is where this is your downfall. Go Davidson, ahead, do it. Davidson Figueredo is going to fuck up Marlon Vera. Marlon Vera in a three round fight against Davidson Figueredo. Davidson, first of all, Marlon Vera, fashionista. Marlon Vera, star fucker. Marlon Vera, slow to start. Uh, King of the scary look with nothing to back it up. Uh, little shrimp, you know, five foot eight, you know, shrimp, shrimpy, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. But Marlon Bear, honestly, you know, go fuck yourself. Um, I'm going with uh, Davison Vigredo to give him his 10th loss. Uh, Marlon Bear will have 23 wins, most of them bullshit. Nine losses. Now it'll be 10 double digit losses. Davidson Figueredo, title holder. Marlon Vera could never sniff a title. Um, biggest claim to fame is that he punched Sugar Sean once while getting the shit beat out of him by a fucking guy who Marlon Vera. You lost to Sugar Sean really bad. You lost to Corey Sanhagen really bad. He... Pedro Munoz sucks. Dominic Cruz was old. Rob Font's one dimensional. Deuce de Guerrera is going to fuck up Marlon Vera bad. And by bad, I mean it's going to be a fight where Marlon Vera thinks he won. But if Davis and Figueroa can do what he did to, Co- to Cody Garbrandt, he can easily do that to a non wrestler, a non threat in Marlon Vera. Marlon Vera, Super Bowl hangover, depression, drinking, tequila, stinks, Ecuadorian, already won, already, already won. You know what I mean? He already won in life, and uh, he doesn't need to win anymore. He will lose more fights in a row than Tony Ferguson. Um, Marlon Vera stinks. He, he should suck Action Bronson's dick. Why don't you go suck Action Bronson's dick? How about that? That's what I think you should do. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. That was too far. That was too far. Dan. Was too far. I'm going with Marlon Vera. Um, bigger, longer, younger. Um, never been finished versus a guy who is finish reliant in Davidson Figueredo. Most of his fights that he wins ends up in a finish. That's going to be real hard to do against Marlon Vera. I think Marlon Vera comes in here with a little bit of a fire under his ass coming off a a championship loss. Um, What's that mean? He starts in the second round instead of the third? Say what? I said, what's that mean? Uh, Marlon Vera with a fire under his ass. He starts. Well, listen, the, Davidson Figueredo. He, he is, starts actually fighting in the second round. Davidson Figueredo is also a slow starter. Let's uh, like he also is very low volume, not only in the first round, but through like every round of every fight he's ever been in. He doesn't throw up a shit ton of volume. Uh, his wrestling isn't great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm supposed to be like so swayed that he's a, a bantamweight now, like a really great bantamweight at 36 years old. We know the metrics on that because he finished by submission Cody Garbrandt. Like, oh, oh now I'm swayed. No, uh, I'm going to go with the younger guy who's actually been at bantamweight, who's never been finished, uh, who has more volume and more ways to win in Marlon Vera at an underdog price. I'm going with Marlon Vera as well. I was just making a joke. Um, <laughs> I think Marlon like Vera is just going to be way too big, way too strong. And um, Davis and Figueredo's chinny, she is going to, or he is going to get knocked out. I think Marlon Vera is going to finish him. Whether Marlon Vera loses the first two rounds or not, I think he finishes Davis and Figueredo. Davis and Figueredo will not finish him. Marlon Vera, that coconut is hard to crack. And he's going to be there all fight. Um, I just think he's going to be too big, too strong for Davis and Figueredo. But Davis and Figueredo could just be too fast for him. Who knows? I right. hear yeah. All right, this could be a difficult fight for me. We got the Pirate versus the Lord. 
Uh, Cousin Adam, Casual Adam, referenced this fight. He's all in on the Pirate. As OG fans would hey, who did Alex pick? Marlon Vera. Uh, yeah, double P certified, Marlon Vera. Bullshit. I'm going to go with the Pirate. Uh, I hate to say this. I love Lord, one of my favorite fighters, but I think at this point in his career, he's getting real chinny. A lot of knockouts coming his way. Um, I think the Pirate on home turf gets this done. I don't know what else to say. I think striker versus striker. I'm liking the Pirate here, unfortunately. Pirate's 13 and 0. He is not really impressed, to be honest. I mean, he knocked out Tricoli. Who cares? He knocked out Bruno Silva, or he decisioned Bruno Silva, a fight where you know, he spent a lot of the time on his back. Um, Lord's in a must win situation here. He did get submitted by, you know, Kevin Holland. He did, uh, get submitted by Michelle Pereira. Um, so that was a technical just... submission. He was, he was almost out of that. They yeah. stopped the fight. It's yeah. I do remember that. I th- listen, here's my thing, right? It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I think that Lord has a big chip on his shoulder. Um, and it's going to fight hard here. I think the over is the play. I think it goes to decision, but I'm going to take Shara Bullet as well. Um, I think the UFC knows what they're doing. You know, you got a guy with eight losses, a lot of them by submission. So it kind of says, like, he's not going to have, you know, a great. Is this fight press pressure Preston Parsons versus Odin Elliott, where it's like, okay, he, you have two guys who are strikers who are equally shitty at grappling. But one guy is less shitty at grappling. So it's like, does the striking cancel out and does it revert to grappling? And does Lord get the win via grappling? I think no. I think Sherry Bullet gets the win here. But I'm tempted. I mean, like, that's the thing about this card. There's just a lot of tempting underdogs. You know, it's it's a lot of fights. A lot of fights that really should be lined more like a pick em, where there's a, a big gap. So I'm going to go with Sherry Bullet, but it... it, it I, I, I do think that eventually the Bucks going to stop with Shara Bullet. I think he's like Alex Pereira, but he's getting fed grapplers. And eventually the grapplers are going to win. Or, or eventually, I, I think he can't avoid grapplers in his division as much as Pereira can in his division. So, um, and not even to say that Pereira is like, you know, completely incompetent. He just has a style and a strategy that is. Well, he, Pereira came up in this division as well. It's 185, so. No, nah. well, I'm talking about his current division, and he didn't have to deal with any grappler at 185. You know, like the best grapplers at 185 are kind of yet to emerge. Like Hamza just joined 185 before Pereira, you know, took hold. Uh, Bo Nickel just had gotten to the scene at 185 before Pereira took hold. Then he moved on, and now he's in 205. And you had the situation with Jan and Ag- and Kaliev, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Share Bullet. By knockout, eh, maybe. Share Bullet by knockout. I'm going with Lord. I disagree with Dan entirely. Uh, I don't think he's getting chinny whatsoever. If I remember, if memory serves me correct, he knocked Kevin Holland down with a strike and then like went into his guard and got caught in that arm bar. If I'm, yeah, if I'm did- remembering correctly he was looking sensational against kevin he holland he went he out was. there mad on a with a purpose he never tapped his arm wasn't broken he got an x-ray that night wasn't broken it was a technical submission he never tapped uh he was pissed and his arm wasn't broken so he deserves his win money from that fight um he's the man he's gonna go out there and beat the shit out of share bullet He's going to be like, oh, you have one eye. I'm going to punch on that side of your face all fight because he's actually smart. He has a brain. He's going to beat the shit out of Shar Bullet. Uh, he's he's better everywhere. He's better at striking. He's better at grappling. Uh, there's no way he loses this fight. You that confident? Lord is no grappler. I hope you're Positive. right. I hope you're right. I will Positive. not lay a single bet on the Pirate just out of fandom. So. I'm kind of Alex is gonna sway me. I like Alex's confidence in this, you know. Um, because for I'll, me, I'll throw some shekels on Lord. Hell yeah, dude! You almost lost a fucking Bruno Silva, dude. Bruno Silva's trash. So did Alex Pereira. And Alex Pereira <laughs> did not almost lose to Bruno Silva. Shara did. 
Alex Pierre I finished. Know. He kind of almost did lose. Listen, I kind of agree with you, Alex. I think that Shara finds himself in a fight harder than it's going to be. Hometown, he's going to be like getting taken to hold Falcons and taken to fucking drive Ferraris and taken to swimming pools with tires by these fucking idiot cheeks all the time, you know. So, and I can say that because I'm never going to one of these fucking countries. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, all their hobbies are fucking lame. Like, I don't want to see a tiger. I don't want to see a falcon. I don't want to fucking drive a fast car. I just want to drink. That's what I want to do. And you guys don't do that. So guess what? Bye-bye. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, I don't fucking. They're like, come to Dubai. Why? 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 What? What? You can get a massage and drive a dune buggy. Yeah, I can do that fucking in Texas, dude. I don't need to fucking go to Dubai to drive a dune buggy and fucking get a massage. Okay. I don't need to go to tech. I don't need to go to Dubai to spend twelve thousand dollars on a handbag. Okay, I can do that in fucking New York. There's nothing for me there. What? But you can do a skydiving simulator. There's one down the fucking street from me. Okay, I don't need to go to Dubai for any reason. Like I'm not going. I'm not going. You'll never make me fucking go to one of these countries ever, 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 ever. So if your whole thing is tourism and all that shit, not only am I not going to go, I'm going to convince five other people not to go. I'm going to convince fucking five others. I'm not going. I don't care. Um, I'm not going to fucking walk on eggshells. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, I hope I don't say something about the king. Oh, I hope I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost not going to go to Thailand. I will go to Thailand, but I'm not. I'm almost not. I'm almost not. You know what I mean? Because it's like, don't get on my ass. Don't get on my fucking ass. If I go to a third world country, I want to make sure that I'm living more free than America. You know what I mean? Cheaper food, cheaper beers, surfing. You guys have a man-made lake with everybody's fucking dookie in it. I'm not fucking going in your fucking man-made ocean. I'm not going. I'm not doing it. It's a thousand degrees. No. Fuck the tourism in the fucking Middle East. Never go in there. I'm a fucking George Bush Republican. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Kidding about that last part. You all hand your checks. Bing, 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 bing. Um, okay, so Corey Sanhagen, you murder never get met off. Um, a fight that was booked once. And who said uncle? Who said fucking uncle? Who said I ain't I ain't fit to fucking even show up and try? Who said I can't even show up and try? Umar. Umar is not getting my pick. You give me underdog odds on Corey Sanhagen. You know, Sanhagen is only pulling a Sanhagen in that he is going to the Middle East. He's, you know, but he's just, he's just white bread enough to have it not affect him. You know what I mean? Corey Sanhagen is used to like, I don't know. He, he wears Vans, you know what I mean? He plays video games. He wears the same underwear three days in a row. He scratches his butt and sniffs it. Like, he's a fucking scummy white dude, you know what I mean? And he, a flight? That's not going to matter to him. You could fucking, you, you, you could be like, Corey, eat this moldy sandwich. He'll be like, oh, I like moldy sandwiches, you know what I mean? He's so fucking weird, and his mind is so sick. I think that he goes in there and beats the Fuck out of Umar Nurmagomedov. If I pick one underdog for the entire card, it's Corey Sanhagen. The mongoose will rise. The mongoose will fucking slay the snake. The mongoose will slay Umar Nurmagomedov. Umar Nurmagomedov. Yeah, guess what? Khabib's good. <laughs> Khabib's house. McGregor's about to buy Khabib's house, and McGregor's gonna make it his fucking personal porta potty. Okay, so you hear that, Dan? No, no. McGregor That's amazing, though. That's true. Because, you know, Khabib's having all these issues with his home and stuff. And, uh, or the government is seizing his assets. And McGregor was like, just put a bid in for Khabib's childhood home. He's like, I'm going to take a big Irish shit in it. <laughs> and he was been <laughs> DMing Khabib. <laughs> uh, I, I, hope, I hope McGregor buys Khabib's house, makes a whole Mr. Beast style vlog uh, of him fucking burning it. <laughs> of him fucking <laughs> So yeah, I'm going with fucking Corey Sanhagen. Umar, you're a bitch. You already fucking cried, Uncle. All these li- the only reason Umar will win is because all these little Russian Muslim guys do is wait for the perfect opportunity. You know, they're a bunch of weight bullies. They're a bunch of cry babies. Here, here, here's the typical Nurmagomedov. I mean, Corey Sanhagen's six foot at one fucking thirty five. Never, never missed weight. Never cried. 
Never missed weight, never cried. Here's the thing. Khabib, every time. <laughs> ah, and, all his, and all of his teammates putting the towels on him. Oh, Khabib, Khabib. Fuck you guys. You guys are weight bully cowards. You're fucking. He's, he's uh, you know, injected his ass. Injected in, in his asshole. You guys are all on the Ali Abdelaziz special doctor special. And you're all fucking. Here's what you guys do. You cut the most amount of weight to fight the smallest opponents so that you can have an advantage cowardly. You cry during the whole process. Like, by the way, I guys, and I can say this because I've completed a seven day fast. Okay. I have not eaten food for seven days. You know what else I did during that time? 88 pushups on a single breath using the Wim Hof method. You know what, you know what else I did? Went in the sauna. You know what else I did during that time? went on the fucking elliptical machine at max resistance and ran a fucking sub six minute mile on the, on the elliptical. You know, I'm not saying I'm on the fucking treadmill. I'm not even saying I'm on the street, but I'm saying on the elliptical with max resistance, a sub six minute mile on a, on day four of a seven day fast, then in the sauna, then 88 pushups in a row on a single breath. I'm jacked. I'm a beast. I'm mentally strong. I would love to be a fly on the wall with your face red as fuck, veins popping all out while you're on one breath doing 88 push-ups. Hell no. Hell no. Not even close. Not even close. My face doesn't get red. And the reality is... Your face is red right now. (laughs) Guess what? Tomorrow the fast begins. Tomorrow the fast begins. (laughs) Okay. More of the fast begins. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do. Wait, when did this happen? When did this fast happen? Where you did all these uh, physical? When I lived in New York. When I lived in New York City, I recorded all my times. I recorded all my data. Oh, I, I thought you just did this. Okay. On day seven. On day, four, on day four. He's living in the past. He's, he's living in the past. You might hours. as well have gotten a tackle in the championship game. How he's talking, dude. No, no. He he doesn't live that life anymore. He's he's not on that lifestyle. I swear to God, I'm, he I'm has stopped to training by day and Joe Rogan by night all day. I definitely don't Joe Rogan by night, but here's what I do. Like I have three episodes of Joe Rogan that I tried to watch. I'm like, okay, I'll watch the Sebastian Younger episode. Okay, I'll watch the Louis J. Gomez first time on JRE. I'll watch it. Why? And then I'm like, I, I literally I keep looking at it. I'm like, I'm not. No, I'm not fucking watching this shit. Um, <laughs> and it's so funny, like, you know, fads, right? Like. I literally put it on to go to sleep. Pokemon lasted longer for me than the Joe Rogan fat. You know what I mean? Like I was into Joe Rogan. And then the, the second, you know what the biggest problem with Joe Rogan is? Is that everybody else now has to like all of these fucking idiots that Joe brings on his show. They have to like pretend they like them so they can like get closer to Joe. Like you see, like, for example, the barstool crowd, they're like, Oh, we love uh, Tony Henchcliffe. You know, the, the busting with the boys guys. Remember when Tony did that that clip where it was like, "I'm about to spill the beans on these motherfuckers." <laughs> <laughs> and the busting with the boys guys actually released that, like thinking like that was cool, right? It's like I don't watch busting with the boys, but what I do know is football players should take Tony's Henchcliffe's head, squish him like an accordion, and put him in the toilet. You know what I mean? Because Tony's not a guy who should be hanging out with football players. You know who else shouldn't be? Tom Segura, okay? These guys talk about Tom Segura. They're like, you look good, man. You're like, and Tom's like, hey, I look good. I look good. Tom Segura is a fat fuck. He should have stayed a fat fuck. All of Joe Rogan's little satellites should remain, like, just on the Joe Rogan podcast. But because all these star fucker celebutant wannabes try to get in with Joe's circle, now they have to pretend – that Bert Kreischer is funny. Now they have to pretend, and I like you, Bert. I'm sorry, Bert. I didn't mean to say that. Bert, Bert's okay. But they have to pretend Tom Segura is funny. They have to pretend Tony Hench is funny. They have to pretend Ari Shafir isn't a fucking old boomer wanderlust little nerd. Like Ari Shafir has a travel pervert. pervert. He has a travel podcast, and you know you want to almost like be like, yeah, you you remember Ari from like ten years ago? You're like, ah, I like Ari Shafir. He's funny. And then you watch his travel podcast and you learn who he really is, and it's like. It's like, dude, your thing isn't that you travel. You're not Anthony Bourdain. When you talk about your travel experiences, you sound like a 14-year-old girl. You sound like a, a fucking, uh, like, you know, like uh, like uh, somebody who goes off, like, on the gap year. And, like, it's like, I stayed at a hostel and, like, I learned so much about, like, this, like, you know, other country. It's like, he he's all about, like, wanderlust and, like, it's so boomery. You know what I mean? 
So my point is, guys, Ari, you're fine. Bert, you're fine. Tom, go fuck yourself. Tony, go fuck yourself. Andrew Schultz, go fuck yourself. But it's like, these guys are fine, but now they get so much more, like, fake clout pumped into their asses because all and, and it's not like sincere like these guys don't like you they would never be friends with you they just want to get closer to joe and they know oh i can't talk shit about these guys you know what i mean meanwhile joe casts fucking brendan schaub to the fucking wolves lets everybody talk shit about him nobody Poor gives brendan, brendan schaub any respect nobody no hey, no class. except for me except for us except for us the, we're the only you know any of size like any of size like- we're a small podcast, but like any of size, we give him respect. And the reality is, Brendan deserves more respect than Tom Segura. Brendan is funnier than Tom Segura. His stand up specials are funny. Gringo Brendan Poppy, funny. classic. Funnier than to- anything. Oh, Tony. Okay. Take Tony Henschliff, one shot on Netflix. Gringo Poppy. What's, what has more LPMs? What has more laughs per minute? Gringo Poppy. Gringo Poppy. <laughs> Way more LPMs. Um, Fighter and the Kid. Way more LPMs than Kill Tony. You know what I mean? The only thing funny about Kill Tony is Red Band, who Tony, by the way, Red Band, the <laughs> only motherfucker who hung out with Joe Rogan, the only person who was friends with Joe Rogan for the longest time, Brian Red Band, the only person who was friends with Joe Rogan for the longest time was Brian Red Band, the only one who gave Joe the time of day. All these other people had to get begged to go do his podcast at the beginning of the day. They're like, why are we even doing this? This is stupid. What is this? Does this even go out on the internet? Red Band's the one like, no, Joe, do your podcast. Do your podcast. It's good being in his corner right then all of a sudden this fucking snake in the grass little fucking coattail rider jamie comes along pushes red band out the door now he's sequestered to having to be tony henchcliffe's fucking butler and what does tony do abuse him have you guys seen how much tony abuses him on the fucking kill tony it's disgusting tony you'd be nothing without brian red band back when your podcast was called what it was like tony henchcliffe's notes yeah i know yeah it wasn't even called Kill Tony, and Brian Redman believed in you, and he fucking helped you, and he produced it for you. Yeah, it was shitty. It's always been shitty. Everything Brian does is shitty, but the reality is, at least Brian was there for you. And now, what does Tony do? Cat talks shit on him, like, openly, live on the show. If I was Brian, I would take the money and run. I would ditch Tony. See how far Tony's podcast goes without Brian Redman. See, I mean, at this point now, he's breached the stratosphere. All these star fuckers just do it because they want to get closer to Joe. You and that beautiful see. wife years, you run the secret show, and and you know, you you sit at the Sunset Strip comedy club and, and you live your life. Dude, I'm I'm sick of this shit. Uh, but listen, here's the reality. Any of you guys who see this, just know you know nothing about me. I know everything there is to know about you. Okay. I know everything there is to know. I've seen it all. I, I understand you. And if you can communicate this product, you can make money off the product. I don't know where we even go from here. I don't even know where we go from here. But the reality is, Joe is living on a spaceship. He's flying amongst clouds. He has no idea what these guys are doing beneath him. He has no idea all the evil that Tony is doing. He has no idea all the evil that Schultz is doing. And he just, like, meets, sees them once or twice a month and, you know, lets them do whatever they want. Forget, I don't even know where we're... It's same with the UFC, right? Joe doesn't even know about the UFC anymore. So it's like, we're done with Joe. All he's worried about is steel cups leg kicks and that's the extent of it that's all he cares about Wait, what, what was my point fights. what was my point though I fucking no, no idea, idea. <laughs> we we're all over the place but what how did this start it was like okay tony Tony shouldn't be talking to football but, but yeah that was something it was something like that like busting with the boys <laughs> I, how do we get here? I have no idea. I have no idea how we got here. Um, I'm going to cut this whole part out, but reality is... When you uh, saw that, I shut that. up and listen. Thank you. And listen, and that means the world to me. Um, but I, I don't even... I had a point. It was a salient point about UFC and about how... I don't know. I lost it. I completely lost it. Either way. I've never lost. All the satellite guys to Habib suck. Something like that, right? Like, yeah. Maybe. You were talking about Joe Rogan satellite guys that we have to respect for no reason. And I, I don't know. It related to UFC where I was going, but I don't fucking remember what my point was. But hey, I guess we'll never know. I'm going with you, Martin Rigan Medoff. Um <laughs> not the Mongers. I just think it's it's a great hedge opportunity if 
I'm going into the main event of the. Oh, so you're playing to lose. You're playing to lose. Because you don't hedge. You don't hedge. (laughs) (laughs) Every time you ride it into the fucking rocks, every fucking time. (laughs) No, here's the thing. I was talking to my friend about this the other day, and I was like, at this point, I know for sure the time I cash out, I'm going to be like upset about it because the actual, I'm going to have predicted the right thing. So I'm just waiting out that next time that I actually win so I can stop. <laughs> so I can stop riding it into the rocks. But I know the day I don't ride it into the rocks is the day that I hit. You know, so right now we're just waiting for that. And then once we do that, we'll start playing smart. Because it's, yeah. it's, it's evident. It, oh, it has that's to what I was saying. Up. Is that Umar Nurmagomedov? And the Nuremberg and Medoff clan, the Dagestanis, what they do is they wait fully, they cut weight, they cry, they say, I can't fight during Ramadan, I can't fight during this, I can't fight during that. And then they go, and then they're pullout merchants. I mean, we, we went over it with Josh Van versus, uh, what's his name, right? Or, or uh, Where these guys just continuously will pull out of fights, uh, and, and then they only fight when, like, okay, everything's going well for me. That's not a fighter. A fighter is somebody who, and same with Makayev, right? Makayev. Oh, so you get jumped by Manel Cap, so then you have to do your little trickery to get him, right? It's like a fighter fights when the fight begins, and a fight begins the moment you face what? Adversity. And when you face adversity and you decide not to show up because you ate too much tiramisu or you fucking are crying about fucking having to do something you chose to do, it's like just fight at 170. Oh, no, I, I'm going to – instead, I'm going to try my best to suck all the water and food out of my body so that I can have an advantage over smaller men because I'm a pussy and a coward. And then when it doesn't go well for me, I'm going to fucking cry and bitch and complain and pull out. That's bitch-ass shit. It's the antithesis of the sport. And it's one thing to be a weight bully. It's another thing to cry about it. It's another thing to quit. It's another thing to pull out. Umar already pulled out. He already cried uncle. Sanhagen would never do that. He's got the fucking warrior spirit. He's got the Miyamoto Masashi book of five rings going on. He, he'll never let what happened in that Alex Trevite happen again, ever. And I hope he sees Marlon Vera and pushes him into a fucking locker because Marlon Vera is a bitch compared to Corey Sanhagen. And she... I'm going to go with Umar Nurmagomedov. <laughs> Uh, I just think he, uh, I think he takes him down. I mean, I think that's the easiest path here. Like Corey said, he doesn't take down people in his fights. He's a fucking kicker. He's a striking deck. He can take people down. He's taken people down before. He's done it many times. I think he takes them down easily. Corey Sandhagen notoriously does not defend takedowns very well. I think, uh, listen, Luke, if we want to go with, you know, your thing here, that is kind of the bitch move to do, right? It should be a striking battle. That would be the more fun thing to watch and uh, uh, a more uh, proven ground of manhood. But he's going to take the path of least resistance and uh, get a couple of takedowns, win three rounds, and call it a day, take his paycheck home to uh, to Abu Dhabi. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at. I also agree with Alex's point of view, not that he'll actually take his own point of view and go with the hedge opportunity, but I probably will if I get there, but I probably won't because I suck at gambling and I'm minus 152 in the hole. So hey, who even fucking cares? So I'm why does it even matter? Hey. I'm leaving the podcast right now. I'm going to leave the podcast. I'm leaving. Wait, you have to give your full picks. Don't talk about my friend Dan like that. He's a good gambler. <laughs> Who said anything about me being a bad gambler? Except myself, which is all that you, matters. You did. you did. I said, don't talk about my friend Dan like that. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing there. I got you. Yeah, uh, no, it's... Uh... We'll pick top to bottom. Let's get it going. I'm going to uh, listen to you guys go first, but do it slow because I got to type them up while we're going here. All right. Type this up. We're going with Dante Mays. No, do them in order. I don't am. I'm going off DraftKings. All right, let me go to top Alex, you go first. Yeah. All right, I'm going with Umar Nurmagomedov, Michael Olajacek, Marlon Chidovera, Tony Elkui Ferguson, Lupi Lupita Godinez, Elvis, don't call me Presley Brenner, Alonzo (laughs) Menafield, Caillou... (laughs) <laughs> Hernandez, <laughs> Shamil Gaziev, Garam Kutalakadze, 
Victoria Dudikova. Ronaldo Bedoya. Cedriscus Dumas. I think you you have the perfect parlay this week. I'll go on record saying that, Alex. Thank you. I think I do Dang too. Now. All right, I'm going to follow Alex's picks for one of my parlays, but mine will be as follows. From the bottom, Cedricus Dumas, Jai Herbert, Sam Hughes, Gurum Kutaladze, uh, Dante Mays, Caillou Fernandez, Asma Mirzakhanov, Elvis Brenner, uh, Lupita Godinez, Tony Ferguson, Marlon Vera, Shara Magomedov, and Umar Nurmagomedov. Real quick, Alex, you had Menafield or Merzikanov? I got Menafield. I, I don't think I said that one. Many men. No, no, you did. <laughs> but I, wrote, I, I wrote AZ, uh, but a, or I wrote AM, but AM is also... AM um, oh, Mirzakhanov. I see. So, uh, that, that's where I got confused. All right, if you're going with me, I'm going with Corey Sanhagen, Sheriff Bullet, Magomedov, Davis and Figueredo, Tony Ferguson, Lupita Godinez, uh, Elvis Brenner, Joel be certified, Elvis Brenner, um, Alonzo Menafield, Muhammad Yaya. I got Dante Mays. Don't tell him, don't tell him. I got uh, Jordan Volcheniak. I got. Uh, Victoria Dudakova and Hanat Holando Bedoya and Cedricus Dumas. So we got I we made fun of Adam for uh picking Cedricus Dumas um or betting him, but he's trophy he, certified and so is Elvis Brenner and, and he so took Chalulin. He didn't even take Cedricus Dumas. That's hilarious. But he did the first time they were booked, which is even more casual to do. To, to pick him and then not pick him. But it won't happen anyway. The fight's not going to happen. So Elvis Brenner, Tony Ferguson, Cedric Sumas, those are the three should be certified picks out of 13 fights on the card. Um, thank you all for joining the show. What a long episode. What a mega episode. I'm going to timestamp this one, actually, too. So uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. We hope you watched. We hope you joined the Discord. And more importantly, we hope you joined the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Perfect Play Pursuit. We need money. We need yearly subscribers. Um, you know, it, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple deal. Um, you know, nine ninety nine a month, a hundred bucks for the full year. Um, wow, where we have double that amount of subscribers since I made that little infographic. But guys, most importantly, nothing we said here even exists or is real. We are just kidding, and we are not even real, and uh, we were lying about everything. So, I know we talked a lot of shit. I know I talked a lot of shit about Tony Henchcliffe. I mean everything I said. I know I talked a lot of shit about Joe Rogan. Joe, it, it's it's no love lost. It's on um, the arm. It's on the arm. Bert, we love you. Uh, Tom, we hate you. It's a whole mess, guys. But, like, if you're watching the show, uh, all I want you to do is just go, do I actually like the people that everybody is spoon-feeding me? Like, next episode, Dan, remind me to talk about the Hawk 2 girl. Hawk oh, two. yeah. Hawk 2. Remind me to talk about that girl uh, in the next episode. I gotta Hawk 2 Ivasa. I, Hawk 2 Ivasa. I got I to gotta give my take on that because as a guy with a daughter, as somebody who is, like, paying attention to kind of, like, George Soros, the Illuminati, you know, things like this. I think there's kind of a tie in here with like, we'll talk about it next episode. Anyway, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining the show. Anything else you guys want to say? Any parting words? Yeah, I'll be in Phoenix uh, this weekend. Oh, we need Stand up live. He's <laughs> doing big plugs. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll be at Zany's Nashville. Uh, I'm going to be at the Adobe Theater in Portugal. I'm going to be, <laughs> in, and then after that, I'm going to be in the Netherlands at the red light lounge uh in this asshole but other than that dan any plugs any dates you want to plug i actually will be in san diego watching these fights at nine o'clock in the morning hell yeah fights and eggs oh, yeah, and eggs. To these fights the uh main card i believe starts at noon noon eastern noon. time noon awesome. east oh yeah right uh, so the, the prelims the early prelims start at noon Dan will be in San Diego, 9 a.m., mimosas and fights. I love that for you, Dan. When I was in Thank Hawaii, you. I got a similar little thing going on for me when I was there. It was great. Nothing better than you You wake up like 8.30. You're like, oh, let's fucking go. Coffee fights already starting. It's awesome. I can't wait for you. Uh, fights start at noon this week, boys. Nine for Dan in the West Coast. 
join the discord we need soldiers we need people like-minded individuals and uh that's the last thing i'll say thank you everybody we love you thanks for joining love y'all give us a comment give us a like join the fucking patreon you know what it is uh-huh.